What is up, Living Soil Nerds? Happy Wednesday to you. Uh, Marco and I are now deep into the trenches of uh, bringing you these episodes. And, you know, it's been years and years that we've gone through this and we've interviewed a variety of people on the show uh, from the home grower to, in my opinion, maybe some of the best growers, uh, at least in America. Uh, and a lot of people probably argue in the world with some of the larger commercial facilities. Mm-hmm. And with that comes genetics, with that comes learning about people's traits and all these kind of things. And recently we've been interviewing, uh, I would say people that Marco and I don't necessarily know as well as we've had probably in the earlier uh, aspects. And so as we've continued to interview these people, uh, pe- other people come out of the woodworks, if you will, and, and start to say certain things. And if it's credible, uh, then, then Marco and I try to uh, do a little bit of more research behind the scenes and find out what's going on. So that's what's going to uh, go on today. And I kind of wanted to throw it over to Marco. We're going to have a, a quick dialogue here while we're waiting on our guest um, and, and kind of get into this kind of stuff because we just want to know really the truth. And I think a lot of the earlier stuff that, that has gone on, uh, we've seen it with belief. It's no, um, you know, it's not even an elephant in the room anymore. I think people are a lot of people are probably past it at this point. But the point is that it happens and it continues to deceive. And so, um, you know, I, I want to give it to Marco. I, I know yeah, that man. you have really thinking on this. And then, yeah, you and I can uh, chop it up for a little bit. Yeah, man. Um, appreciate that, Brian. Yeah, good to be back. Uh, our guest today is going to be a little bit, uh, you know, he's going to be about 30 minutes after show starts. So it's all good. But, you know, we were talking about it, you know, before the show, man. It kind of boils down to trust. You know what I mean? And like. You know, I do these shows because I want to learn. I do I do the show because I get a chance to talk to the real people during you know, real time and ask my real questions about whatever it may be. You know what I mean? And so, you know, we when we you know say, hey, come on the show, you know, would you like to come on the show? You know, we want that to be a real deal thing. And and it usually is. But sometimes, like you said, man, we learned about, you know, the belief thing. We learned from Fresh last week, you know, about with the genetics. You know, we like to give both sides of the story and the truth is right there. And once you hear both sides, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, this is just another one, man. We, we bring on large accounts, big growers, also the small guy. You know, we bring on a lot of people that no one even has even heard of. And uh, our guest today. Um, Eastern Kentucky genetics, you know what I mean? They're a small account, but they're, he says he's, you know, he's, he's got that skunk, you know, that Kentucky skunk. And when people hear that, that old school skunk or that old school, whatever it may be, sour or whatever, it's like nostalgia. So, you know, you want to know more about it. So I'm interested, man, to hear what he has to say, you know what I mean, on his genetics and, um, you know, a little bit about handshake deals too, you know what I mean? Like, what how much can you trust the handshake deal and then we were also saying like shit this is a cyber handshake a lot of times it's just guys on two accounts on a phone coming together you know so just want to talk a little bit about all that stuff man and um you know it should be a good show I definitely want to dive into the skunk genetics so um that's going to be real fun to learn some stuff about that and as well as gorilla uh, growing because um this is another guy that's in a prohibition state so um you know he'll be kind of working under the under the leaves if you will yeah and i i feel like man for th- this topic everybody's talked about skunks to agnosium uh, a lot of people have always kind of claimed it i feel like for me personally the, the the person that i've seen that have something that resembles of that a lot of that which would he would even say is not exactly the original is a gentleman named duke diamond that's known for skunks um so when we talk about skunks in general a lot of people are just kind of like over it because everybody claims they've had it or somebody has it. And to be clear, this gentleman is claiming, uh, Eastern Kentucky, that these are his father's genetics. And so that's another reason why doing a little more research on this, some of this stuff is starting to make a little more sense. Um, and so we just want to always kind of as, as best we can give both sides of the story. Uh, and what this gentleman is saying is that, um, you know, his genetics are the real deal. And so we're excited to interview him. Uh, but at the same time, man, um, I guess I kind of want to get back to when we had Heston on the show, he was saying that he wanted to uh, do some things for his family. And when I hear a man talk like that, I respect mm-hmm. it e- almost immediately. And I, I feel like I jumped the gun on it even because this man said that he was doing this for his wife and his kids. He was getting off Instagram, all of these very, in my opinion, maybe very noble things, especially uh, right. being self-reflective and being like, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to get off that kind of ego box 
and really grind and, and put some actual money and monetary uh, things into my family's wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, I saw that maybe last, I would say, between 24 and 36 hours. So for whatever reason, man, I mean, it, it, it doesn't really even affect me. Uh, but Heston came on the show, made a promise that that I saw that I, I thought was more to his family and, and right. didn't even keep it for like a two full days, three full days. So with that, uh, that's why I uh, started to do a little more digging on this kind of stuff, because it's it's eye opening to me, man, when somebody makes something like that. And it is very short lived, like, uh, hey, I'm going on a diet. You know, you know, somebody says it to you on Monday and by Thursday you see him eating pizza and stuff. It's like, man, you didn't even try for a week. Like, that seems <laughs> that's kind of weak. But why even bring it up? And so that's, you know, Heston, that's on, on you, man. I mean, you came on the show and maybe we could interview again. Um, yeah, you, know, you feel a certain way about defending yourself. But I've always felt like if somebody's saying something about me and I know that it's not true, I address it and I keep moving. And that's not mm -hmm. what I saw. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just wanted to keep it 100 with the uh, FCP community. Yeah, yeah, I feel you on that, man. And and that's like, you know, it, it just sounds a little fishy when you hear something happen. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think I mentioned that before, just as a grower. Um, it seems odd when, you know, they just can't take that grow to the end for, for some strange reason. You know what I mean? It's like. And I guess that that happens. Um, I've never had an issue like that. I've had a, a kind of a scare before where I've had to take things down um, just kind of out of my own uh, you know, caution, if you will. Um, but it wasn't because of, a, you know, in the middle of a deal or working. This was, you know, this is this guy's stuff or whatever. And something happened, you know, kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it is, you know, it is one of those things. It'd be cool to hear kind of. Um, you know, for him to kind of briefly get into it, tell his side, you know, but I do feel you on that, Brian. I was like, hats off right away. Like, damn, you're doing it for your family and all that. Hats off. I My first thought, though, was like, you know, you can manage that yourself, too. You know what I mean? Like, if you know your ass is on the fucking Instagram too much, then back off. You know what I mean? Take a break. You are the one that's doing it. Like, we're, I mean, you shouldn't be to the point of being addicted um uh, to the internet and speaking of that shout out to big joshua you know what i mean he just posted on his um ig today he's taking a little break you know what i mean and sometimes you just need a break from the bullshit you know what i mean um because if you think about it sometimes the connections you make on ig are not the best connections you know they're not always good it's, it's cool yeah i met this guy well, you and i met ocalix and my beneficials all the cool guys we we've, we've met on here be about it farms um great connections but then i guess every now and then we all have it, a connection that isn't so great so um yeah sometimes you, you gotta just disconnect yourself a little bit man and um yeah i was shocked though you know because he came right back and um for the size of his account you know what i mean man i got fifty five thousand followers or whatever and then um eastern kentucky is just a small account with not even a thousand i don't think um, size of account doesn't matter. A lot of people don't even have an IG, but my whole point is if someone's definitely saying something that's wrong about you or whatever, or me <laughs> talking shit about me and it's false, first of all, and number two, they're not, they don't even have a large voice, then just fuck, you know, fuck it, let it go. You know, there's no need to even address it. Now you actually give an audience to him that's, you know, 55,000, uh, strong now. So, um, you know it is what it is but that handshake deal man you know there's no there's nothing stopping you from breaking it except your manhood man you know yeah and this is um again while we're you know, both sides of this again marco and i don't have a dog in this fight uh we just like talking to inter interesting people and part of that is uh trying to understand who doesn't really have the biggest accounts because everybody already knows about those people and usually the people that I promise you, you would want us to interview, or maybe some of the more people in our Rolodex that uh, I can hang out with, but would never come on the show. They, they don't have Facebook, Instagram. Uh, they have their quiet little life. Um, I wouldn't say anything about them is look at me in any way. But at the same time, they don't have the same stresses that most of us do uh, because they do live in their simple, they have a very simple life, but it seems like everything is always paid for. And so that's what I've always kind of admired with more of that simple lifestyle. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, East Kentucky has just hopped on here. So we're going to get into it with him here. Uh, bring him on here. Uh, good to see you, sir, or hear from you, sir. Oh, there we go. 
All right. Yeah, all right. Mask up, free boys. All right. We're Kodak Black today. We're a all breakfast right, club with Kodak Black. So, uh, yeah, man. So in the in the early days of when Marco and I were doing this show, man, we were interviewing a lot of the homies and a lot of the people that were in the industry that I feel like everybody had already kind of vetted. And as the years have gone by, we've tried to go out of our way to interview people that maybe some people have heard of or more of the home growers that uh, I would say maybe not necessarily everybody's heard of as well. And so uh, interviewing Heston is now brought into a whole new world of kind of understanding the genetics from this side. And, you know, you make some bold claims talking about the, uh, the skunk genetics and stuff. So uh, Marco and I behind the scenes decided to give you the platform today so that we can sit here and interview you and kind of hear your side of things. And uh, we always want to keep it respectful, man, but we, we have no problem hearing um, your side and how you feel about it. Uh, at first, I'd like to thank y'all for letting me uh, just even come on here, man. This is one of the show. This is one of the few uh, podcasts that I believe that's left that actually does showcase the home grower. You know, there's uh, the past four years I've been watching a lot of podcasts and uh, I went from watching uh, Matt Wright talk about genetics from Not So Dog, uh, the Breeder Syndicate, I, I, to Adam Dunn, to, I've watched about every podcast there is and I, I've seen a lot of them start talking about genetics and then next thing you know it's just all, uh, it's it's like they fade away from the genetics and start talking about other stuff. But at least this, at least the future cannabis podcast, they focus on the home. They and I believe that's where the genetics are. I believe that's where the majority of the genetics, the the majority of the genetics, lay is with home growers. I believe that. Uh, yeah, man, I believe that too, bro, and I say that all the time. Good, good to have you here today. Um, so I'm just gonna—I like calling you Eastern Kentucky, man. That's what we're gonna go with. If that's all right. Well, um, I think that uh, it all starts with our environment. But uh, I started on Instagram three years ago, 2021, as old Gorilla Grower. That was my other page I used until it got shut down. The reason I started that was just to showcase the work that my, the honestly, the work that I was doing was just selecting plants. The stuff that my dad had done, it really wasn't focused on until I sent the seeds first to JJ at Top Dog. I let him go through them before I did anything because I believe that he knows me. Uh, you, you fell off there, East Kentucky. Yeah, I, just, I think that happens when you get a phone call. Hey, hey you on you on mute, man. I think your phone got a call. You on mute. You on mute. I don't, I don't know if he can hear us even. I can't hear you. That man talking his ass off. <laughs> Let me see if we can see the private. We can't talk. Oh. Hold on, homie. All right, I'm gonna uh let's see. <laughs> All right, hopefully you'll uh come back there. I'm just kind of right. well we'll tell them yeah, we'll mention that when you do get a call. I think if you got an Android, it'll kick your shit off. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay, so he's getting into the seeds, that's what's up. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, I guess the, the the way that this guy feels about things, the way he explained it to me was, uh, you know, having your dad stuff, trying to make a name from it, and then having somebody else, you know, how, however it went down. I, I don't even want to speculate. Right. Like, he feels a certain way. Obviously, Heston feels a certain way. Um, and the stories don't add up, man. So I hope this dude... Uh, well, I thought this guy was going to be older. I honestly did too, to be honest. We were calling him the <laughs> old man. <laughs> All right, man. All right, let's see if it's on there. All right, man. All right, Sorry, so man. just so you I know, think, if you man. get a phone call with an Android and it kick like you uh, swipe it for whatever reason, man, it drops that and it keeps the video but not the audio. Okay. 
So It'll mute you down. Yeah. Yeah. Try not to have the homies be. If this is okay. the trap phone, we're in trouble. You know. What I mean? Okay. So I just. All right. So you was at. You sent him off to JJ, and that's yeah. when you went down. I sent him off to him first, so because I wanted him to look to him, and uh, he said he found some uh, basic skunk. He said he found the same thing that pretty much what Duke has, you know, which which I figured that that's what I was that's what I was finding. So I look up some so one more other. I send them off to AK Bean. I know y'all pretty much heard of him. Like these are staples that I believe in the in the in the community in our community, right? The people that I look up to, like JJ AK Bean Brain. And he said he didn't find anything. He said I didn't find much of anything. He said, but you can send me some more. We go through them, but I never did get to that. So I started sending them off to old school chronic. He's the one that first started handling them. And then uh, everybody can give him a bad name, whatever they want to say about him. I'm just being honest here. I sent them to him. Then I sent them to some other people. Then I sent them to Total Health Connections, which is Mario. Uh, he found, he said he found some stuff out of them. Then, okay, now this is when it gets tricky, right? I get locked up. I go to jail. And when I get out, I need to come up with some finances to pay for house rest. And this is all on my last, this is all shared. Like I'm sharing all this on my old grill grower page when I get locked up. Because uh, here, well, anyways. I get my dad's cut, the original cut. My dad's the 96 skunk, they want to call it. I call it Kentucky skunk. But my dad has had a cut for the last past. It's some, It's very volatile. Okay, so I start. So I sell it. All right, now this is the cut. That's about what year see. was this? What year was that, though? Huh? Well, about what year was that you would have got your dad's cut? Oh, no, I just did this. No, I just did this here about last year. I just did okay. this on about, about a year ago. I sent this to Piffonomics. It okay. goes by P Piffonomics. He got like 18,000 followers. All right, I sold him my dad's original cut, right, the one that made the seeds with. Uh, now, I got he sent me post back saying, man, it's the skunkiest thing I've ever smelled. It's all skunk. I said, I know it is. That's, that's what I've been hearing from uh, almost everybody I sent it to. Well, after I sent it to him, I sent the Old School Chronic, Piffonomics, and then I sent the seeds to Total Health Connections. And then this is when Flora Farm. Now, this is when Flora Farm starts hitting me up, right? This has all happened within the last past year. This is when Flora Farm hits me up, right? He hits me up. He's like, man, so we done a trade, and he sent me some auto seeds that was open. I, I didn't pay that no mind. I shrugged that off. I'm not going to talk bad about the guy because he's not here, right? And anyways, he did what he did, but I sent him the cut. Now, listen, guys. I sent him the cut, my dad's original cut, not the cut that was found in some seeds. My dad has got a cut that's probably about, I don't know, it's at least, I go back to 2014 because that's when I got out of prison. That's as far as I can remember back, man. This is between doing hard drugs and going to get locked up for three years. And 2014, as far as the last is the... But anyways, I sent the seeds and the cut to Floor Farm. So he ends up with... First, he ends up with the seeds. And then he gets the cut off of me because he's... This is when he talks. He's like, man, listen, don't sell the cut to nobody else. You hold it. You keep it to yourself. He said, we'll start charging 250 And then he said, we'll start. And when I get back from Spanibus, we'll do our blah, 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 blah. I'm like, that's a deal. So I send him my dad's cut. This is after I see him the seeds. So now he's got the whole kit and caboodle. But he had, he had any flour at this time to know if it was any, if it was no. good? Okay. No, he hadn't flowered it yet. He was just taking on the, like, the word of what I was going to. And I don't right, fire right. it out here where I'm at either because it's so volatile. Like, where, yeah, the location that my dad's at, the facility that we have here, we have a facility that we have bought here in Hazard. <laughs> uh, it's a school. It's not running at the moment. But at that school, he's, you know, it's you can run a few things. You know, it's a little d different where I'm at. 
Right, I got you. I got you. So you all right? So then, what's the problem? You you don't no. This is just me talking. You don't sent the seeds out to everybody. Let everybody try them. Some people found good. Some people didn't. And you also sold a cut. Yeah. Well, boom! You send the floor farm. Boom! He got the seeds and the cut. Yeah. Yep. And then everything was fine, man, until he come back from Spanibus, and it was like. Before he went to Spanibus, we had a deal. I mean, it was all good, man. I was like, look, I ain't selling the cut to nobody else. And next thing I know, it was that. But like I said, he he could have his own issues, man. I don't know. He could be going through some things. I don't know. But now my dad first got this plant from Florida. This plant come up out of Florida. As I do know this much because it come out up after the flower. We were getting the flower. Like, I'm going to say this. And I somebody can probably, somebody... If they hear this, they probably know what I'm talking about. The flower was coming up in cans of weed, right? It was being stored in them old Donald Duck orange juice. Like if you wasn't able enough to buy the real stuff, you know how you could buy the stuff off the shelf and mix it with water? Yeah, the old can of juice. I yeah. know you're talking about. You're saying they were storing them in, in, the, in yeah. those cans. I got That's you. how the flour was coming up, right? That's how my dad was buying the flour. One pound a can, buying like 30 cans at a time. Oh, and then sure. that's when he asked the guy for the plant. He's like, well, can you get me the plant? You know, bring the plant up. And we never did grow inside. We used fluorescent lights to keep them alive all year. And then we would, that's why I said, if you make a bad selection, that year, you was done for. You was well. Done describe for this plant for, for us. Describe what is so bad. What's this? What's so bad about her? Tell tell us about the the plant. Yo. What's it's very. Like? It's 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 very. Like man, if you blow on it, if you blow on it, it, it will harm. It's very. Uh, it's just from my experience, seventy five percent of the plants that skunky are hunt are very harm. Very harm. They. I mean, if you blow on them, shake them. They're not very good indoor plants. They're, they they like to be free outside in the ground, from my experience. Well, the, he was growing them indoors in beds, and they look solid. They look, they look good. really solid. I've got the cuts. I've been sending the cuts. I already sent, I sent those. The cuts he sent to me, I already sent to Blackbird uh, Preservations. Hopefully they get there. I sent everything out yesterday to let him. I sent him everything. Every cut that was sent back to me. From Total Health Connection, the one that all the cuts that Floor Farm sent me, everything I sent them to him to let him look through them. Well, you are everybody's got a lot of ge that genetics now, though, man. You shared it, so you know. I that know was you... all it was about, man. That was why I started this page. Why I started, right. I started this one. Why I had the old grill. It was just to share my dad's genetics because. Well, I how much are you selling a cut for? You sell the cut. <laughs> I sold the cut. I sold for them for three hundred fifty dollars, and that was just to pay for house arrest that month, right? There you I had to go. Cover that month's house arrest, and I was like, and this is all on my like. If anybody's following my old griller grower page, it's still active. I just can't. They won't let me in it because I won't give them a photo ID. You know, they won't let me back in it. But all this stuff is on that last page. Like that's why I like JJ so much, man. When he he's like the seeds I send him right after he got done with the seeds, you know what he told me? He's like, look, I'm going to send these seeds here. He sent them to dog days. He told me where he was sending them. Fine. That's fine, bro. You mean you did a square deal. Uh, you, you, uh, you, you, you are, whatever you do with those seeds is on you. Uh, floor farm. All he had to do, man, like I get upset that they, Take my, that they take my dad's seeds and then they block me. Why? Why you got to do that for? Like people like Mario, Piffonomics, Floor Farm, all these dudes got big followings, man. Twenty thousand plus, right? Why you? You don't got to. You don't got to do all that, man. I, I will share my stuff with you, like it was shared with me. This plant don't belong to nobody. Don't f to it, like JJ told me. Just don't f to my gear. That's it. Do your own selections. That's all. You, you don't got to steal it. I'll give it to you. So walk, walk us through um, what you're saying, because obviously Heston has a view of something. You have a view of it. He was saying one thing, saying something. You were saying you feel a certain way so that we can kind of piece this together. So, you know, it doesn't have to be long either, like a 60 second elevator pitch of how you felt this went down. 
I feel like that people have platforms that they abuse them, right? You don't abuse, like, when you got 50,000 followers, you don't abuse that platform and get people hanging on the stream, tell them what they want to hear to get what you want. Don't fall for those shiny gold chains. Don't fall for those bells and whistles, the jujus and the BBs, as they say when you go to jail. Don't fall. I don't want. I, yeah, I don't want. I, just be honest, straightforward with me. You don't well, maybe do were well, you expecting too much out of the handshake deal, bro? Because you know how that you is. Bet, yeah, I was, I, yeah, I was definitely. Yeah, I was. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it was definitely. I was expecting way too much. I was told this too, like, bro, like you better back up, you know. But you better slow down. You're getting way too far in. I was like, and I, I fell for the bells and whistles. No, I don't ever do that, man. That's what we have a lot of shows about, man, where people got these damn personas and shit, and they're not even the real person. You know, they're not even who they who they pretend to be. Like, you know what I mean? That's like, crazy, bro. I've never really tried is. to, sell, you know, I've never tried to sell anything. I never tried to sell a pack of seeds. I never tried to. I've always like, look, you 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 want to pay for shipping. And if you want to try to run these seeds, I will send them to you. Right there, I will send you seeds if you're willing to pay for shipping. The cut's not available right now. My dad, he's like, ever since Floor Farm done that, man, I can't even. I got that. I had one. I just sit. The only thing, like, Pithonomics isn't another. Like, he's another. Like, why did you take my original cut? Why did you have to block me and act like, you know, it's just crazy, man. Must be some fire, I guess. I don't know. You smoke it? How does it smoke? It's just it's heavy skunk. Like it's just it's super it's, skunk? it's 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 just all skunk. I call it that bedroom skunk, right? Like because if you're 45 plus, like me, I'm 45. I remember my dad and them smoking, and I can smoke. I can remember, right? We walk in the bedroom. You could, and then when you leave, you could smell it. Like you could still mm -hmm. smell that when you walk down the hallway. You still smell it when you get in the car. You smell it when you. <laughs> It sticks in your it sticks in your palate. It's, mm. it's that yes, and it's it's you can see it. It's it's an app. It's it's pure musky, skunky. Just and this it's yeah it's all skunk. It's, it's, Where do y'all gorilla grow? How do y'all gorilla grow it? How do y'all like? What are some shit you got to do? You got to put it way out there or what? Not, well, I grow in uh, I grow in uh, like uh, now I tell you how I grow in Paraline. That's how I okay. go. I cut paralyzed cuts. Yeah, that's how I, I do it. And I still do that to this day. Like, if you follow me, I'll still grow in my old patches. I still got some. I'll, I'll show, like, paralyzed be running right down the middle. And, you know, I just 10, 10, 10 my outdoor. Now, indoor, I'm a perlite, cocoa, you know, peat moss kind of guy, like a 70 30 mix. And I throw my blood meal, my bone meal, my, all my meals. And then I'll feed from the top synganically. They call it synganics is what I've always heard it called. You know, when you run high-end synthetics from the top with good, you know, amendments in the soil. You know, I feed very low. Like, if it's called... You got to. In, yeah, very low, very small amounts from the top. And I feed my micros, too, like my calcium, my silica, all that stuff is fed from the top. Do you have worms in those systems? Like in no, the, no, not indoors. Outdoors, yeah, not indoors. I don't. I was just wondering if they would survive in that the way you're yeah. doing. It. You, know, you know, I would be. Well, you know, the thing is, is uh, with my dad's genetics, right? He's got like. I think people get skunk plant, and skunk, skunk confused. I think that when people say skunk one, right, like a uh, Todd McCormick skunk one, right. I'm sure, I mean, it's fire. I'm sure it is. But everybody knows that Skunk Man Sam clearly said it with his own m mouth. Like, after the F1s, he got skunk out of those. I mean, wretched, skunky smell. Then that was the first one. Then he tried to do away with that smell, and he went toward the sweet side. Uh, I think your gas skunk smell. If you want that one, you're going to have to go toward like uh, the Kims and the Sours and the Afghans. That's why I sent them out first to, to JJ because of his work with the Stardog and the Afghan and the Kims, you know. 
it's just still a work. So when out of those seeds, uh, okay, so the, uh, off that plant, where was the cross to get the seeds y'all have? Or is this back cross or what? Yeah, well, back then, right, that back when my, when my dad first got the plant, it, I don't think we really seen a name plant until probably 2008, and that was White Widow. So really, the the first time he done a cross with those plants that I can think of, that I know the name plant, like that's that's why I said this plant that was used in 2014 when my dad, that I remember getting out of, of that's when I got out of prison, 2014, we started back making seeds. And I can remember him, that's the, but that was, they wouldn't, like plants didn't really have names then, you know, it was skunk. Everything in Kentucky that was fire was skunk. Like Hayes was New York, Kentucky was skunk. You know, give me that skunk. But really, name plants like JJ Star Dog, uh, uh, the uh, Corey Hain cut was the seeds that I've been. That is really that crossed with the Kentucky skunk is the seeds that I believe that's been producing the last past yeah 2021 was the last time we made seeds. My dad produced any seeds. And it was with the Corey Hain purple pheno that JJ sent me for, uh, that he sent me for trade. We found a male out of that and we used it. That was the last time that my dad done any work. Okay. So if you get seeds from you right now, they're going to be them Kentucky skunks crossed with that Corey. If Hain you stock. get the 2021 stock, right? I got 2014. That oh, you got stuff that goes farther back. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, I got stuff that goes. I got a 2000. Yeah, I got seeds that go all the way back to 2008. That's when we got busted. You can look this up in the newspaper. Perry County, Kentucky, has in Kentucky. We the National Guard come in took like 150. I live in a little town called Typo. You can look this up in the newspaper. I'm sure it's still there in the newspaper. They don't take them out. You know, articles stay there, right? You go in, you can see this article. Uh, the National Guard come in, took like 150 on us. That was the first year I got hit by the choppers. Me and my old man, my dad. That was the, and we had, uh, and the only crop that we got by with that year was our seeded crop. That was it. That was the only, that was the only thing they didn't touch. And we got like a thousand, like I can't even count how many thousands of seeds out of that. That was the last time we made seeds out, outside together. And now the stuff you're growing this year, I've seen some of your posts. You got cuttings. You got all kinds of shit going on. Is that off your seeds or is that off other cuts? I've got Is any of that stock. even Kentucky skunk? Yes, I've got one Kentucky skunk that I'm growing that I had traded some seeds to a guy that owns a vape shop. That guy, I ain't going to say his name or the name of the vape shop. Because, you know, I'm from Hazard, Kentucky. It's a small town. There ain't many vape shops. I'm just trying to say stuff so people can look up the truth. Like, you can go ask this dude. I traded clones back for these seeds because that was the last ones that I knew of. So I found a theme I thought was a male because it, so, it was so fat, broad. I thought it was going to be a male. I was getting all skunk out of it. I was getting what I was looking for. So I was like, it's going to be a male. But it's so far, it's a female. But. Who, who knows here in about like a week or two, she could turn them, I don't know, man. You got to watch out for plants like that. They're very volatile, very volatile. Everything about them is volatile. Okay, so, okay. so you can help us piece some of this lineage. Like when you say your daddy, did did he have like a pseudo name or something you could say? When Red. Revealing? Yeah, Red? Red Man. Red, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the guy that, the guy that brought this uh, genetics up, guys, is, he goes by hippie. He was in a motorcycle club. The motorcycle club is stationed in Perry County and in Knott County. Okay, so if anybody's out there from this area, you know who I'm talking about. Because there's only one motorcycle club stationed in Perry County and Knott County. There's a motorcycle club. That guy was in that motorcycle club. They were running. He's dead now. I'm not going to say the name, but they were, you know. I, I can't, you know, there's some stuff you can't say, so. Uh, he was bringing the flour up in the cans, like I said, in those cans. And my 
dad straight up asked, he's like, look, can you get the plants? He's like, can you get a plant of that? And he brought two plants up, two females, because we kept them alive under fluorescent lights for like two years, me and Kenneth White. My dad and Kenneth White did. I ain't going to say me, my dad. My dad, they kept these plants alive for two years under fluorescent lights, finally to get one seeded crop off. I never understood that until now. Now I do. I understand now. We need to get your dad on here. You know, my dad's never owned a smartphone. And that's why I said when people say real OGs, I'm thinking, well, a real OG to me would be my, he owns a couple homes. He owns, you know, this and that, but nobody know he exists. Like literally the man does never has, oh, like, uh, he's never owned a credit card. He's never owned a smartphone. He's never owned. He is a pure bread hustler. <laughs> it, uh, it's, that's like me. That's, like, well, that's why I believe the genetics are here. But that's why I don't like, that's why I believe the flowers getting also like wheat too, guys, because we got people that get in the game that they just know it, man. They don't have the, it take. I say you need 10,000 plus hours, right? You need, everybody needs that 10,000 plus hours, right? You need that. So your eye can get tuned to what special plants look like. Like I got a black haze. I've not seen a plant look like her in two years. It come out like that. That's so forgiving. Like you, she she will forget you can put her under I, it don't matter she will forgive you within 24 hours she's forgiving you right back up praying like I, i'm okay give me some give I'll, I'll take whatever you can throw at me and then i that it, i think it takes plants like that right and i've one plant in two years that i would say is good enough for me to keep and it's not my dad's it's, it, it belonged to Piff Coast. It was his genetics. I found out of his gear. I popped two whole packs of midnight mass to find that one plant, but I was looking for it, but I found it. Slim, sexy, sleek, unique, very forgiving, good, great indoors. I, she does even better outdoors. <laughs> I've, grew, I've had her now for two years. I've never seen a spot of mold bud rot nothing like that on it she's fire is there a lot of folks growing i'm not to say a lot but are fit folks out there growing your seeds eastern kentucky genetics that, that you can no, well, that there's, you th there's three i can i don't like name dropping but they don't got smartphones so i don't think they would really uh oh, so they're not people. like ig accounts yeah like they don't have no they don't have ig accounts and nothing like that you got ray mac johnny joseph he's dead now r.i.p to him uh there's other people like john like ray mac right leatherwood uh there's a plant in leatherwood right now i've got photos of it on my ig on my old gorilla girl page I, I I was able to get a hold of it two years ago, grew it. It was the stankiest thing, and it was all it was like pure like a grape, but it was before it was like it didn't have the, all the look to it, but it had the flavor. And they call it the leatherwood pearl because it's so shiny. But it's been here for ten years. Ten years, I know it's been here for. So when you were coming up, since you're 45, you know, when you were like in the 80s, like you said, so there was a lot of dudes like your dad's age that had like their own genetics like that, where they had been keeping them for years and shit. Or no. is that just, it's not that common out there like that? No, we didn't see. We didn't, that's why I said it didn't really come around much until like, uh, like you didn't see much flower here until like the harvest time, you know, September, October, and November. Okay. We, I really wasn't nobody doing indoor here except with fluorescent lights. Kenneth White and my dad had fluorescent lights in early 90s. They were keeping plants alive. They would get them freaking 20 foot tall inside a trailer, take mm -hmm. cuttings off of them, and just regrow them and do that every year. You know, But if your environment is suitable <laughs> for it, you can do that. right? You can do that every year. Like people, It blows my mind how some people think how hard it is to keep a plant alive. But if you're living in an environment that for five to six months out of a year, you can go outside. Like our environment is like California, 
uh, Japan. It's like it's like we live. I live. Yeah, in the winters are short. Mountains. Yeah, yeah, I live right dead short. in the Appalachian Mountains, like mm -hmm. literally in the Appalachian Mountains. When I walk mm -hmm. out, I'm in the Appalachian Mountains. We, it's just like it's hard to explain the environment we have here. I don't yeah, have you have a you have a mild winter. winter. I totally get it, man. I could picture that too. Now that you say that, because if you you can't go indoor because the power bill spike for one trying to cool that shit back then was ridiculous so that's kind of ingenious to fucking get a trailer rent that joint out fluorescent tubes in there and just keep plants growing alive, get bro. ready for outdoor is all you're doing it's cash crop outdoor that's what that's hmm. that's how i was raised up right cash crop was the two words that i remember good in my head cash crop cash crop uh that was how i was raised the cash crop you don't let them get n n no taller than head high. If they get taller than that, you snap them off. You go through there and just snap them. Like I've been, I mean, I'm talking about 50 to 100. We grow in a patch, right? You go a patch and then you put hills with inside that patch. So if you find one hill, you can go and find the other hills. The thing is just finding the patch. Just find mm -hmm. the big patch and then you'll find your smaller hills. But I've been through some hills where we go through and just literally they get too tall and just go through and snapping them off, you know. And hopefully the choppers don't come. And then you do a seeded patch. Make sure you get a seeded patch in. But you got to put 10 patches out. Like, you're working all year, man. This is not, this is a, and you're working on strip. Like, my dad worked on a strip job for, so he was, it was, it was, uh, working in on a strip job and the coal mines and coming home and, you know, there wasn't much to do, so you let your kids do a lot after you get off work. You let your kids do a lot for you. So I, I packed a lot of water. I threw a lot of dirt on my shoulders, split it half and half so you can get it up that hill. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I shoveled a lot of manure, dry manure, not, you know, make sure it's dry, operate it, don't run it. Uh, yeah, I've. Uh, how about harvest time? Would, like, how, how did that look? Because obviously, you cash crop now was serious yeah. business when it's harvest time. Very beautiful. The main thing is getting a cure, right? Right? Like I see some people grow some fire weed, bro, and then all of a sudden they get that dry and cure on. I'm like, what the hell? Like, How'd your dad and them do it? Well, that uh that's the main thing is leave it on the stem as long as you can. Mm -hmm. Leave it on. Well, they stem. have a barn or something. No, uh, we cured in the trailer. He cured in the oh, trailer. Okay. You went yeah, back in the trailer that y'all had used for all yeah, the, the rest of four, the Yeah, yeah, you, you're going just dry and that. Make sure you. Just as long because during the September, October, November time of year, it's cooling down too. So you don't have all this hot temperatures. As mm -hmm. long as you got intake outtake, you're good. You're good. As long as you got some good intake outtake airflow, you're good here. Like you don't have to run no humidifier. You you have to run a dehumidifier, but you don't need no humidifier and like that. I guess the, the the environment is so. It's it's almost it's almost California wrapped in a little like. It's hard to explain. Our environment is just for five months out. Of, for I tell people from May the tenth till about November the tenth, you're good to go. You got to deal with humidity though, right? No, no, no. I spray. Uh, actually, I got it right here. This is what I use. Uh, this is what I use. Oh, you just spray to keep kind of PM and things like I that just down. Keep PM down. That's the main thing. You don't got. A lot of people yeah. deal with humidity issues, but I believe that goes back to your genetics. That's why I like Robbie, nerds. And he sent me some gear, bro. And he got fire genetics, bro. Taco truck and sling green. I, I, kept, I cash cropped that for like a whole year around here. Everybody everybody thought it was sour diesel, that taco truck. Everybody thought it was sour diesel. It looked just like that dude, he knows his stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, he yeah. puts out solid gear. Yeah. No, yeah, nerds, good, yeah, he puts out solid gear, man. I like. Well, nerds, let's, let's get back to the skunks, man. Let's stay on skunking a little bit, um, because that's kind of what's you know what it, what has me intrigued is the skunks. Oh yeah, I got y'all too. I'm, I'm gonna send y'all some genetics after. I'm gonna get your address. I'm gonna send you each the same thing. Two different batches. Well, that's cool, man. But don't you know that that's you getting ahead of yourself again? You already sent out some genetics. You know, yeah, man, I've already sent everybody else. I know, we might as well. One thing about me, if I run them, I'm going to run them out. 
and then yeah. I'm gonna tell you how they ran, and I'm gonna give yeah. you the proof. Because I, I keep up with this show, bro. I've done seen all that shit with Ross. I was like, what the hell? And I knew, listen, this shit with Bailey. You can go back and check my old Gorilla Girl page on this, guys. The dude I was messing with, Total Health Connection, was buying cuts from this guy, and I heard him give a speech. He said, "Well, I quit selling real estate and started sell." I was like, "What the hell, this dude? This dude?" And then, and then that shit comes out. I'm the one that sent that direct. Well, I ain't gonna get into that. I ain't gonna get into that. I'll let y'all know on the back burner a little bit about that shit. Yeah, well, but yeah, the skunk man. Let's get back to the skunk. <clears throat> yeah, definitely, man. So, so your daddy ain't letting you get the cut again. What'd you do? Sneak a cut from dad or what? I stole the cut. I, I knew did. you I did. did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's how Piffinomics got it, bro. I could come. Like, you stole from your daddy. Dollars a lot of cash come up on the spot, and I didn't want to ask my dad for the money and you know we've been in business together for three years and i've been like i've been in the same spot for three years just selecting plants just grinding out so i didn't want to ask him so i went in and took the cut without him asking so <laughs> it's epiphenomics i got my wife to wrap them up <laughs> and she sent them in the mail stinking like they stunk to high heaven he got them and uh epiphenomics loved him bro sent me back made he made posts and everything like I got a model on my page. Like he said, it was the skunkiest thing he smelled. Yeah, yeah you loved him, man. Cause you, cause you, you sent that man a, a golden ticket. Like you know what I'm saying. And then he sent you back some beans. <laughs> he sent me back nothing, bro. He, wait, no, he didn't. No, he sent me three fifty. He paid. Yeah, he paid for it. I can honestly say okay. that that guy paid for his cut. The, well, but the deal was you didn't know what you had. I don't think you knew, but you could have done better, man. Like I you could have marketed was, that way right? better. We made a deal. To, he said, "Look, I was like, don't sell the cut to nobody." And then he starts selling it to some dude named Chef Buds on IG. He goes by Chef Buds, and I, this comes back to me. I'm like, "Well, if you're going to sell the cut, then I'm going to start selling the cut too." So I end up going back and stealing another cut. So I went up taking two cuts off my dad. Man, I swear, my dad's gonna kill me. I stole two cuts. And then, then the second one ended up in uh, Floor Farm's hands. That's how Floor Farm, he got his cut. Well, I don't care how many grows he tore down. You ain't throwing no cuts away like that. So I imagine. Well, no, he ain't going to throw all those cuts away. Like he had yeah. cuts in our bodies. Not just of my dad's, but he had some very. Yeah, you got to keep your shit that you're going to run for the future, you would imagine. But Well, he had that sour best shit ever in there. What's he going to do? Throw that away? Come on now. He didn't throw that cut away. Well, that's shame on you, though, man, for, for doing it. I mean, I'm not saying bad or whatever. That's on you. No, you're I'm right. Just saying, you don't know what you had. You if For having a skunk like that, you could have took your time and, and built that up, off yourself a little bit. You know what I mean? And made more money off that bitch. I could have. I probably could. I guess if probably if if my if me, I guess I'm in a unique position where I'm able to uh, I'm able to I love to grow, especially like people like CSI, Archive, Mean Gene, uh, like these dudes. I love to see what they've got in their F twos, anyways. Right? I like to see. I ain't much on F ones. Like hybrid bigger don't impress me. I like to see the uniqueness after the bigger, right? the uniqueness in plants. So that's why I like working with F2s, I think. Uh, but it really, I like working with other people's gear m m more than my dad's, if that makes any sense. I don't know, I guess, where I've been using his gear for so long. I mean, for, I've been growing since 99, nothing but his seeds. He Because I remember in his head, he's always freaking saying, you better find you a mail. You better make you a good selection. I've been hearing this shit since 95. Better make good selections. Better make good selections. Uh, sometimes is he putting in more work to like to build the lines or is he kind of just, hey, there's No, you just make it, make sure you make, yeah, make good selections for the next <laughs> year. Because when you just do outdoor, your whole entire seed crop depended on that selection for that year. Because once you made that selection, there's no going back and making new selections. Do y'all do one plant when y'all do the selection for or do y'all no, well he it? does no no he'll find he'll do like multiple females and like no no I mean when you so when you say 
we're going to cash crop. Do y'all just find one plant and that's the one that's all going out there to cash crop? For him, yeah. Yeah, we, we, okay. yeah, we, yeah. back <laughs> then when we was cash cropping then, we were cash mm -hmm. cropping the, the skunk. And then we were cash cropping some other plants that Kenneth White had. He goes by Kenneth White. He's dead now uh, or in prison. I ain't sure if he died yet, but he's locked up. He's the one that shot the sheriff, James Katzen, in Powell County. He shot the sheriff. Now, this guy shot a sheriff in Powell County. And he got locked up in federal prison. So I'm telling and he's dead now. So or he might be still locked up. I don't know. But he had a plant. It was skunk too. It was pretty, but much. That was that was the only thing they selected for really back then was smells, and pretty much structure. You know, you went off smell and structure because that was your selection. You went off your instincts, right? You went off your eyes, your smells, your nose, and you better hope you make the right selection. That's why you do like multiple females, so you know you're going to get one right. You know, you make sure you're going to get one right. We destroyed city crops too. Like they would come up the next year, and we not go back and check that place. And they come up the next year, and we go like fifty yards down the hill, and we put another big patch out with fifteen hills in it. And they say, you know, half those hills be seeded because of the seed because of the seeded crop that we planted the, the year before. So we got seeds like that too. Okay, so some of those salada seeds, like you said, will just be diverse. You'll just have a, yeah, bro, yeah, just be like in there. 2014. They wouldn't know names really here in Kentucky. Like White Widow was the first name plant that I seen here in Hazard, and that was 2015. So, we, like I said, we're we're so small, we didn't get anything. Like, bro, Hazard is so cut off in Prairie County, Eastern Kentucky. Not County, Leslie County, we're so cut off that we have to provide for ourselves. You know, we had to make genetics each year. We didn't get High Times magazines to order out of. Half of us didn't have phones. Hell, half of us didn't have electricity. You know, half of us didn't, was, dude, half of us was using coal stoves up to 95. Like, I know five or six individuals that still heat with a coal stove that absolutely cash crops some of the fires we ever smelled and they didn't get electricity until 95. Mm, yeah i can believe it man it's rural out there coal mining and all that shit. so what about the meth? what did the meth do to y'all because i know when that swept through that probably took a lot of the folks well, that were normally no, grow that's, out. What I, that's one thing i do want to say on here right it's cross-contamination guys that is why i believe in the home grower so much right now I've seen so much fentanyl being cross-contaminated, not being put in in the flower itself, not not being put in flower for for accidentally. You know what I'm saying? Like it's being cross-contaminated. Where they're handling both, they're handling buzz, they're handling. Yes, the, the, yes, the, yes. Uh, yes. We've I've seen, like I've seen a couple people. When you hear somebody saying, "Oh shit, they fell out because they smoked," that's probably because it had some fentanyl caused cross-contaminated you know, in the transportation. Man, it was oxys that really took us out. Like, it, like I, I got locked up in 2010 or 11, something like that, 2010 to 14. But it was the oxy fest. That, it was the moxies that really took this out. It just took everybody out. It just hit them by waves. Do the, peop do the people can still look for y'all now, or is it more they're looking for hard drugs? They let the growers kind of do their hard thing. Hard drugs, out. man. There ain't me people smoking flour. Like I, like I, like I'm a recovering addict. I've been sober now since my son was. My son's now three. I've been sober now three years, going on something like that. But I use flour for that. Like that helps me tremendously to to fight off thinking about getting high with, a, or even to help me sleep majority, or to help me eat. Like, uh, but flour just, I don't think people realize that some of us actually do that. We would do this if we had a million dollars, man. I don't, that's why I said my, my paycheck, me paying bills don't revolve around me selling a pack of seeds or me selling a clone. Me making sure my sons took care of is already done. That's already done. I don't got to worry about my son. Never, ever. He's already took care of. 
all I got to do is step back and grow and make selections. That's the good thing about me now. I can grow and make selections. That's that's why I believe anybody that wants to do this, don't be threatened. Don't be scared. You put plants in the ground and you do it. If you go to jail for it, so be it. Listen, they ain't going to keep you forever. It's a cannabis plant. They're going to free the plant. When they free it, they'll free you. Keep your mouth shut. Don't steal. Don't cheat. Don't lie. Be honest. Don't be somebody that you're not. Don't try to fake it till you make it. You be humble. And you just keep making selections. I'm a plant selector. That's what I call myself. I select plants. That's it. The uniqueness. F2s. But I don't... The skunks is... The skunk smell or the skunk plant, whatever it is. I think it's out there. I think it's out there to be found. I think if you get 50 seeds of my seeds, like I traded JJ on the second round, I sent him 50 seeds back. But he told me something that rings true. He said, if I can't find fire in four seeds, then I don't want them. He, I remember JJ saying that to me. Like, if I can pop four of your seeds and I can't find one good plant, Either I'm not doing something right or you're or you're not doing something right. And it's probably me because there should be there should be a good plant. I mean, if if you're claiming what it is, there should be one good plant out of four. At least. Yeah, that's high standards there, but you know that that that's that's top dog for you. You know yeah. what I mean? I'll at least give that's you a exactly. pack. I give you at least a pack. You know what I mean? I'll give you a ten pack. I, I yeah, got at least pack. Yeah, you want to really go pack. at it, right, yeah. But we yeah. all ain't JJ either. Like the dude's been putting in work since I was Hell probably yeah. since I was being thought of, you know. Exactly. So he's got some serious gear under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. So, yeah, skunks. You know, you would probably be better off now then because all those seeds being so diverse, like you said, keep selecting. Yeah. Find. Don't lie. Don't lie to yourself. You know. You know. Find that one that's that supreme fire. And then, then, and then release those or put them however you want to do it. That's that's probably a lane you can get into right there. But at least that way you keep control of your genetics. You know, what I mean? yeah. If, if you don't even know what's in there, and then you're giving them, putting them out like that, you know what I mean? You could just be giving away a little bit of a gold mine, man. That's how floor farm come in to happen about this. You know, I was <laughs> trying to do a seed increase. Honestly, I was trying to get a seed increase, and my dad did, wasn't having it. He's like, "Man, I'm not doing nothing else. I don't want to fool with it." I was like, well, oh, I got you. Because you can't really, you don't have the grow set up to be able to yeah, do that. Yeah, so. and I'm not that good. I am i don't consider myself, like I said, I'm not a breeder. I just select plants. I don't really know what, like you said, you found that ripe truffles. Or, I heard you talking about that plant you found. Like, how, how did you know that was special? That divine pine. Because yeah, that's what you wanted to work with. How, how, like, how did you know? It just hit all my senses, man. Like, it was visually... Okay, it was checking boxes, visually look good. Then the Terps is really what did it. That's where I follow. My nose goes to the Terps, you know what I mean? Once that, it gives me them looks and the Terps, and I'm like, all right, I got a winner, you know what I mean? But okay, how many have, times did you have to grow it before you knew it was that good? Man, it was crazy. The first fucking run, I knew it, but wow. I, immediately, I immediately ran it again. I was like, man, this thing is very piney. This is really nice. So I immediately ran it again, like in a whole nother bed. And it was just, a, she was amazing again. And that's when I, when I knew it was a winner. You know what I mean? That's how, but it, that's, that's rare. Like that, you don't always just see that one. You're like, damn, you know, like that's the one. Um, for now, for the moment, you know, I mean, Let me ask you this, the how many times have you had that thought in the past three years with that plant? Like how many times have you seen that in three years and different plant, different seeds? Yeah. I got a few different keepers, but she's right now, she's probably, um, well, my new one from nerds that I just okay. found, my, um, moon and stars melon. She's she's making me feel like that too, and other people. It's not just me, because for me, I'm like, oh, I like that. But then letting other people try, and they're like, oh, it's like that, or you know, if they don't have a comment, you know. So you know when it's fire, man. As a grower, we've done it enough times, popped enough seeds. You know, you can already start seeing it in the seedling. I can in the seedling stage. Oh, this looks like it's going to be a nice plant, and um, 
sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, you know. Ultimately, the Terps, you know. I've got uh, one from in-house right now. I believe it's going to be like that. In-house genetics. I'm doing some work. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah, done a lot of trades. Like, I sit trades. That's why I said I, I don't take people's gear. I do trades, and I've been trying to collect for my son, right? I've been trying to collect for him. Like, everybody sends me a pack of seeds. I ask them if they'll all sign one pack for my son and then send me and i've been doing tr trades with everybody that's like that's how i got like i can't tell you all the people i have done like trades with and then i'm starting to really go through that stuff right now that's why i've got like i got 50 things of csi to go through so much of csi's work i've got mm -hmm. a lot of stuff to go through i like how you're keeping that for the next generation so if he does feel like he wants to do go this lane it's available yeah. And shit, if, if you have to, when you get ready to retire, you can sell all that shit if it's still in yeah, My dad's um, got a refrigerator full of seeds that go back, I know, from 2008. I pulled some out. Like, every time I go around and he start getting seeds, like, man, don't be, like, now since I took that one cut, now when I go, he's very suspicious. Like, he gets suspicious. Like, don't be trying to, like, I should have took the you cut. Now. I shouldn't have took the cut. I should have told him. He would have given it to me. But uh, I didn't want to deal with him, blah, 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 and constantly asking me about stuff so i just took the cut sold them to Piffonomics, never thought nothing about it then i was like hell i got one cut left so i sent it to floor farm thought i was doing the right thing and i guess i didn't you know i get he, he said the cut died i don't know or he said he killed it i don't know mm -hmm. you know and that's not the same cut i sent seeds to everybody else and sent them the cut and then i tried to like i tried to hook up Total Health Connections and Piffonomics. I introduced them like y'all need to get together and trade. Then that backfired on me. You know what I mean? That shit backfired. On me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you setting up, you set planning things in your mind. You know, yeah, man. man I go big on what, you, what, what you happens think, when you're in the black market. That shit <laughs> happens when you're in the black market. You ain't got nobody to talk to. We ain't got no like-minded individuals. Can't share my work with nobody. So hell. When I see the bells and whistles, I jump. That's what happened. Well, I feel you, but you know, watching this show, man, looks like you watched last week. I know you saw Fresh. You know, when yes. you see, you can tell a genuine person, although we can all be fooled. You know, yeah. what I mean, usually you can see, man, that's a pretty good yeah. dude there. Fresh do cool, bro. Yeah, he's 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 a good one, bro. He does good work. I I like his work. I've liked his work for a couple of years now. He's been putting out solid work. You know, Tino, I like a lot of people like Tino's genetics. That's the reason that Total Health Connection stopped. That's the reason he blocked me is they was into it. But I follow Tino, right? He's a home grower. Uh, he's more of on the commercial side. But, you know, like I follow like individuals like Dirty Mitten Seeds, right? I, man, this dude, like his work is stellar to me, right? Y'all might not know. I don't know if you know him. Dirty Mitten Seeds, he's got an IG account. Dude makes, he's got a big, like four or 5,000 followers. He, and he's a breeder to me. People like Copa Genetics, Dirty Mitten Seeds. These dudes, to me, are the heart of genetics. They're the home growers, and that's where your genetics lie. And if you want to get real genetics, baseline, right? Work yourself back to the real gen the original genetics. I believe you got to get with people like this. JJ, Dirty Mitten Seeds, Skunk V8. Like, I heard these dudes talking about the skunk VA and the Kim 91. Now, now is, isn't that the same cut? There's a, uh, there's a lot of argument for both sides of that. I mean, we, we've seen, um, and the more I'm learning about just all this kind of stuff, man, it's, it's kind of silly, man. It's just, um, eye opening to see what people are willing to do, uh, for even short term, uh, success. I just thought Skunk VA was the holder of the original Kim 91. And I mean, Lucky Dog Seed Co., from my research, he is the holder of the original Kim 91. Like, I don't understand. Like, that's as far as it gets, right? To me, if you want the real Kim 91, you hit up Skunk VA. That's from the research I've done. That's, I don't know. Like, it could change in the past three some years since I first started really diving into genetics. But, when I started diving into genetics, I started looking up like people who held these, like who held the original Kim 91, Skunk VA. 
from my research, Skunk VA is the holder uh, from what I've researched, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not 100 on it, so. Well, that's kind of what we wanted to talk about is Skunk, because nobody knows what the hell's going on with that. Uh, I would say 99% of the people out there don't have anything. Um, and uh, from my personal experience, I would say that Duke Diamond seems to be the one closest to that. He's definitely in the circles that you've been mentioning. Yep. Um, so that's why it was interesting to hear about, you know, you were saying your father, Red, had the, his own skunks. I grew up in Georgia, Savannah, Georgia, to be specific. Um, and, and a lot of that time we were having like so-called like Kentucky skunks. And I, I would imagine that those names were changed because there was also Tennessee skunks and um, yeah. uh, what was the... There was some, uh, Crippy, sorry. And Crippy, then there, was, you... there was Crippy that was running through Florida. So it seemed like whoever was moving these in the early days potentially was in the same groups or somebody was running big time because of the, the highways that run up the East Coast there. You don't even have to change anything. You can go, basically go from the tip of Miami all the way to New York. And a lot of that stuff, um, that's kind of why I'm bringing this up. You're talking about PIFonomics. Is that the PIF that you would have heard during those days when – People are hyping their stuff. They got the Crippy. They got Piff. They got uh, even Sour Diesel was a big one, especially that, that, those kind of genetics. Is that who you were talking about? Or is this gentleman just kind of some of the no, people? That's, that he, that's his handle. That's what he goes by on IG. Piff all right. Him. So he's paying homage to, to yeah, those genetics. Like, it's like Piff Coast. It's like Piff Coast Farms, right? Like Piff Coast Farms. But he goes by Piffonomics. That was just yeah. He's just giving some love to the Piff. That sounds like I think yeah, yeah. But like, maybe like, that's his nickname or something. But I don't know. Good weed in Kentucky was called Skunk. I don't know what it was called like in Georgia, but it was called Skunk here. Right, fire weed. Give me that Skunk. That's what it was called in Kentucky. That's what fire weed was called. Like back in two thousand, like I said, we didn't see a named plant here in Hazard until I was two thousand fourteen, fifteen. But everything from '99 on up, man, it was like we like like that can weed we get when you open the can, it was sealed, it was dark, I guess because it had when they put it in the can. I'm I'm assuming it wasn't all the way like dry, but it turned dark brown, and I'm telling you what, it was so potent, I, like when you smoked it. They called it Black Death because when you smoked it, you didn't move. You sat still. You would sit there for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you'd just jump to like, oh, shit, where, where am I at? Like, oh, shit, where have I been at for 10 minutes? Like, it just, it would do that to you. It was very potent, very, it was Was it fluffy gone. in the can or was it like compressed in the can? No, it was, <clears throat> it, this was homegrown being compressed in the can. Right. Because when you took it out and you put a piece of fruit in it, if it, it would fill a bag full, like, like, see, because back then, up. being in the living in that moment, we assumed anything that was compressed was always Mexican brickweed. Mexican, no. you know, we always you just didn't know. Like, it wasn't until later that, like, I was like watching crime shows and shit to Kentucky. I was like, oh, they're growing, they've been growing cannabis like that. Like, I didn't even yeah. know that they were doing it outdoor like that. So a lot of what we were getting could have been to Kentucky or wherever else, you know. And I don't think that we whatever. sent a lot of birds out because we didn't give a lot. Like we 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 would sell thirty pounds at a time. I do know that. Like it my stayed dad, right there. It didn't even go far. I'm sure. No, like, no. Like yeah. I said, we we would make thirty pound deals at a time. It wasn't like it was thirty pounds for, you know, back then you could get. I think the last I, the last big shipment we sold, we was getting like twenty two. I think a, maybe a pound, then it went went from twenty two to around like two thousand. That's about what that's about what we were selling it for, two thousand a pound. If you bought all thirty at once, like you would have to take all of them at one time. Mm. Uh, uh, I've seen homes literally mm. built in one season because of homegrown, because of cash cropping here in Kentucky. I've seen literally guys grow all year live in a trailer and the next year they have enough flour be, to invest in a house how is it now like is there is it lucrative now or just no, it's what? uh it's lucrative if you grow good flour right if you produce in good flour it's very lucrative right now you got to be able to produce some top-notch flour that's where the drying and curing comes in i think yeah. that's what's going to separate a lot of people 
I think that we're all going to be able to grow decent enough. It's just when that dry, and then unless you've got an eye for it, like you, Marco, you know, you, you've got that eye to separate yourself from the rest of the pack. You know, you got your 10,000 hours in, I call it. I say you got to get that in before. It. I believe it with all my heart. I believe you have to get enough years in. To, unless you're looking at three, 400 plants, you know, constantly, I think you got to get enough plants to look at, be like, oh, shit, that's unique. I want to keep that one. And to say that. that one ain't, I'm not keeping that one. Yes, too. definitely. I mean, that's, that's the worst thing about breeding is I'm taking, I'm just really taking off on my own. Now, my, my dad's helping me a little bit, but I'm really taking off on my own. And what I'm seeing is the worst thing about freaking breeding is killing the plants you don't want. Yeah, but that becomes easy too because you're like, nah, you just got to go because you're weak. You're not good for us. Sucks when you get a pack of CSI. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know that pack's probably worth fifty or a hundred bucks, whatever. And you got six of them, you got to kill five and just keep one. You and I've mm -hmm. been doing. I just did a selection like that where I killed five CSIs and kept one. It was the worst thing I ever did. It was like the worst. Well, I, you know, I grow my shit out two times at least, man, before I end the deal. You know, even when you, if you're not a keeper, I put you in with other ones that don't aren't keepers. I say y'all yeah. run together and then see how they look in there. You. Sometimes they'll surprise you, but at least run them twice, you know, so before you, you know, give up no. on it, I'd say. Uh, Brian was saying about Duke Diamond, I believe some of his stuff was getting up here, too, because I did see a lot of uh, red-haired skunk. you seen a lot of, like, uh, you know, you said creepy. You mentioned that, right? Well, if you go look at my uh, tags and my post, there's a guy that goes by uh, BK Roller. He uh is in with dark horse genetics y'all might have heard of him he sent me some uh creepy cross with vader and i found one you talking about is... jason no not jason the other one bk oh, i always get confused with those two i don't yeah know one bk's the one from kentucky yeah he's a kentucky boy like me so he sent me a pack of a uh, vader cross with creepy and the plant looks like rubber it, it looks like a rubber plant i mean it literally and stinkiest plant i've got but that's what they that supposedly. But I've heard of oh, oh. too. I've heard of Supernaut also. It could be Supernaut. Okay, but Flora I, Farms back off the um the social media uh, break again. Let's see, what's up, Flora Farm? We we were talking about you, man. Just keeping everything one hundred. We was giving both sides of the. the, the yeah, deal. not giving a hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah I ain't we're chill, man. We're not on you, man. Calm down. I, mean, I ain't trying to bash nobody, okay. man. It is what it is. Yeah, we move past that, man. We, we're moving yeah. on, man. Calm down. It, 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 it is what it is. Well, I, to be honest with you, just being quiet and listening through the show, seeing some of the chat, and to be honest, not paying attention to a lot of it, uh, kind of shows where a lot of this is, man. And uh, Heston, you're, if you're watching this, you know, <laughs> you told us that you promised to not... Uh, do this and you said you gave your word to your family for well, the uh, family i would Come say 90 percent of that is the reason why we're doing this show is because it didn't seem like you keep your word you kept that shit for maybe 36 hours so you want to come on here and feel a certain way and talk about certain things um I, we have no dog in the fight bro uh, <laughs> we, we, yeah. we honestly could care we're just trying to have fun with stuff we brought you on home grower certain things came up the things that you're saying in the chat, man, I mean, again, it just kind of shows people uh, who people truly are. And, you know, you yeah, feel a certain way, yeah, but, yeah. you know. Bro, we, I got we to even, yeah, we just watched the show from the beginning, man. It's, it, it's not even like that, bro. This man, he already admitted he stole the shit from his daddy. So it ain't even. I ain't it, got it, nothing to lie about it, bro. Like I yeah, said, I don't so make my. We uh, move past that, bro. You can go back on your break, bro, and be with your family. You don't you don't have to come in here hot, man. Nobody's gonna ruin your name, bro. This man's only got seven hundred some followers. We would only know, we only know him because of you, bro. You got your fifty five thousand followers, so you really gave this man a wonderful uh, platform here. I did have um, a decent follower for no reason. So, on me. you know, I did have a decent follower. Yeah, until after I got told on, somebody went and told on me that I I would didn't have. I don't know. They said because I didn't have a photo ID. I couldn't get into my old Gorilla Gore page and make no more comments or nothing, but I could still get into it and look at it. So 
I mean, everything's there. I just ain't able to make no kind of like post because I won't show a photo up. But like I said, I have no hate for nobody, floor farm, whatever. You had to do what you had to do. It's just, you know, to be saying, ugh, man, I wish you would. I got the cuts. Though. Like I said, it's all gravy. Like I said, I don't want nobody taking time from their son. I got a son, and I spend every time I can with him. So I understand. Definitely. Yeah, it's all good, man. Let's move it on, man. We just wanted to give you some. Hey, it's actually just turned into a conversation about fucking Kentucky growing the skunks. We noted that's your daddy. I wish your dad was on to kind of talk about, you know, a little bit more about that. But it's good, man, that you kind of live through some of that stuff, man. And, you know, going through the gorilla grows and hauling soil and shit. And went to prison, too. Like I said, I went to when we went down in 2008 for that last big they they come in three state well no it was three national guard armored vehicles one state trooper vehicle they bring one state trooper like with them i don't know why they do that but they bring a state trooper vehicle every time i've been done it three times but the last time was in 2008 and uh like i said we it was so small of a we really didn't share genetics with outside our community it's like our flower didn't really reach outside of our community either so i don't i just was trying to i really want individuals like floor farm or the larger showcases i was just trying to get my genetics to them my dad's genetics i was trying to make a name for him i thought but i really believe it was doing it for myself i and i overstepped there was some fellas that was trying to pull me back in. I wouldn't listen, and I shouldn't have done what I did. So it was really my fault. It was my fault. I hustled myself. It's okay. It's all right, man. Shit, you 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 admitted your mistake. You know, the only thing it was just a handshake deal, bro. Sometimes they yeah. work, sometimes they don't. You know what I mean? Everybody's got a personal life. You know, what I mean, I remember one guy. He had a huge following. Uh, he got mad because I was like a little late for taping his um his show like this, but it wasn't even live. It was I was running a little late. I had some shit popping, and the dude caught an attitude over that. You know what I mean? And like people got to realize like these are these are just cyber relationships at the end of the day. So ultimately, like there's no signed contract, so you can't be but so mad about this shit. Now you know who don't who not to fuck with. Like if you think the deal didn't go good with him. You know, don't fuck with him. He knows don't fuck with you. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, mutually no, agree not to do business. That's kind of where that is. But um, and we I talk about it all the time. I made the genetics. I just didn't want to lie. Like I was like, I mean, I've been watching my dad make seeds for so many years. I could probably fake it. I've been doing research in genetics. I could probably fake it. I could probably lie and act like they were mine and got by with it. But I, it's like how good of. No, I can't either because I don't know when it comes to operating a plant. I can run them. I just ain't that good at operating. As my dad says, I, I'm getting a box of tools and a tool belt, and I'm working it with it right now. But I'm not the breeder as he is. I mean, I'm not, or what anybody else is. I'm just, I just didn't want to take claim to something that didn't belong to me. That's all. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see his work get showcased, man. My dad deserves it. He's been... He's been busting his ass making seeds for 25 years without uh, uh, without a pat on the back. Just, you know, it's just something he does. That's something we do so we can have good seeds for the next year. We never thought of it as something as being a big of a deal until three years ago. I, I, I heard everybody was looking for skunk. I was like, well, Kentucky's got skunk. We got skunk. It just, I mean, it's maybe it might have been bastardized out like as they call it or you take top cuts and they get weaker over time whatever that could happen but if you, you throw down 50 seeds and you do a pheno hunt and you find that one that smells like skunk and you select for it then you then it's skunk like it's not hard to find you got skunky smells still in plants today they're not hard to find you just gotta throw enough seeds out to find it mm. And I believe outdoor too plays a role. I think the sun really does something. So that's that kind of boil. Yeah, I, I feel you though, man. It, it kind of boils down to you really had your eggs in this basket. You needed this deal to work and all that. I feel you on that. And 
I guess now you kind of like we talk about that on this show all the time. We just talk about more creating your own lane, you know what I yeah. mean? And not not counting on somebody else, especially in cannabis. Um, in anything yeah. really, but especially in this one, you can't really cover your butt. Like if I sell you something out in the real world and it's legit, you do a contract, blah blah blah. You know, here it's all just pretty much your words, you know what yeah. I mean? And so you're you're better off taking your time finding somebody really you know that you link with and y'all can really kind of make that thing happen because now that i see all you really wanted was more seeds you're just trying to have somebody to stretch out your seed stock that's all it was there's no big yeah. deal you know no big deal. i just wish he hadn't lied well not saying he lied to me i'm not saying he lied i just wish he hadn't have told me what he did to get the cut like because we traded for seeds and he still owes me a couple bruce banner uh not lc i ain't gonna talk about it you know because i was trying to look through some autos at the time because my dad said autos is not as good this is how we got in my dad tried to tell me because i seen rubber ducky i throw them autos up that i tried to convince my dad three years ago that autos can do just as good as photos outdoors here he's so i wanted to get the best autos so i started looking for autos floor farm come up that's how we got in that's how i started looking for auto seed really or and then sure enough they no they don't do worth no autos i believe are the biggest lie ever told to this industry i think holland i, I don't know it's probably an urban legend but i think they just shoving autos on us so that we got to rebuy seeds that's uh i don't know man i just ain't big on autos had a bad experience with them i lost hope i ain't never grown them man I, I i was almost gonna grow one <laughs> so I had they, to grow but watching all uh, yeah, watching Flora Farm grow the autos, I was almost like, "Damn, I, this, is, this is cool. I'm about to grow the autos." I'm glad you put the IG back up because I felt like there was a lot of good info on that. Um, yeah, Damn but definitely, um, yeah, we definitely on positivity, man. We we ain't on nothing negative here, so that's kind of what we're trying to keep it on. Yeah. So is, uh, well, I, go ahead, bro. I, this is a, I, w I want this to be a platform where we can have dialogue and if you see say, somebody saying something you don't agree with, um, I've always learned to shut up and just listen. And so mm -hmm. if you feel a certain way about somebody, um, you know, they usually reveal it. And to be honest yeah. with you, man, saying that you stole from your dad, a lot of people are going to feel a certain way about that, you know, mm -hmm. and they're going to probably mm -hmm. also see a certain side of things on the other side. So the point that I'm trying to get is the the if we as a community can kind of hold each other accountable without this becoming the Wendy Williams show, uh, th then I think there's something to that because people will support uh, genetics and I've, we've seen it firsthand. Uh, gentlemen like uh, Fresh from last week, I think when you carry yourself, uh, you go through adversity, you know that people are talking shit on your name and for the most part, man, that guy kept his head down, uh, said that he was working for himself. Uh, and I, I believe that, especially after interviewing him, you know, and so when people say certain things on the show, that's what I mean. We we almost I think we even saluted certain things. And then when that's not even uh, at the forefront uh, of your mind, it makes me feel certain ways and think certain things. And so whatever, however that is, man, those are all emotions. That's an emotional stuff. What we're trying to get at is that these Kentucky genetics in my early days were super, super fire. And we wanted to understand more where this shit came from. And when you were talking about that, you you know, your father had these connections, that kind of stuff. I used to see that. That's where the um, a lot of the the Hell's Angels OG that came through. I think like from uh, a Miami uh, connection up through uh, Atlanta, then into Savannah. So it was a lot of the motorcycle gigs that were able to get genetics that I think a lot of people mm -hmm. wanted probably for a variety of ways of obtaining it, but they were the ones that had that kind of stuff. And so it makes sense to me with the skunks, with these things, however it comes about past this little show, man, I don't know. And that's what we're trying to get at is just, we're trying to talk about stuff that we barely know about. Uh, I've always appreciated the skunks. I've always thought that it was funny to have that extra smell. Like if you would go into a public place, uh, I just thought that was, you know, not only are you high, not only are you smoking cannabis, smell like cannabis, but it does reek of skunk. And so it kind of confuses people. And I just always enjoyed that. So that's what I was after today. And I know that there's drama and stuff from both sides. But at the same time, um, you know, I'm, when you're just quiet and you watch, 
you you learn a lot yes you do yeah, I, I, I could say that <laughs> I, I gotta yeah i remember um shit man when i a couple years after i met nikki you know we're dating and uh her sister came over my house and this was obviously prohibition and she's walked in the door she said damn it smells like a skunk in here you know i'm like Fuck. you know i'm like shit my shit you know i'm leaking uh, so i was able to you know open up a jar and say oh yeah you know i was just smoking some weed or whatever but that was a scary moment bro back then and that that goes to how loud some of that stuff was i'm not saying i was growing a kentucky skunk but I thought that was a compliment, you know. I mean, a, a person not into the uh, cannabis, especially at that time, uh, saying it smells like skunk is kind of a badge of honor. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think you <laughs> just grow fire weed, Marco, for real. I mean, I'm I tried, saying, man. I, I tried. You know, from what I understand, like from from what I hear, you just grow fire weed. See, that's what somebody, some people do that. No matter what, I believe it with all my heart. I believe if you give some people certain genetics. You can do stuff with those genetics because you got a toolbox and a tool mm -hmm. belt. What my dad always told me: the more plants you grow, gives you more tools to work with because you know that's what to a, do with them. Bar. Yeah, no doubt that is a gold bar there. Because if your goal is to maximize the plant's potential, then you're going to do everything you can. And usually, yeah. there's some something decent in there. It won't be everything's a stinky winner. You know what I'm saying? But you could at least grow a nice, healthy plant if the genetics are, you know, let you do that. You know? Yeah, that's what uh, Skunk Man Sam said always when he said, if the genetics was good and you did a decent job on it, he's like, then you should produce good weed. But the mm -hmm. dry and the cure, a lot of people, they mess that up, man. They go, I don't believe they cure it long enough. I just think they go straight from hanging to it. Like, I don't know, man. I think they don't cure. Like, it's like when you cure tobacco, right when they cure tobacco they cure it from the stem i just don't understand like a lot of people taking it off the stem and putting it in a jar and de that's to me that's like de like decarbon it wouldn't it like if you don't get it all the way cure and dried why would you do that i don't know that's russian yeah i, I agree i don't understand I, it. I don't know there's an art to that too man that's where your mids are grown you know you can make yes, great right plant. there Here's an awesome cut. Well, you grew it. It was awesome. But then you fucked up the dry and cure and you got mids, you know, and that happens a lot. People don't just think because you're holding a cut, you're going, that's the key to your growing success. That's, that's the start. The genetics is the start. And then you got to grow it out. Uh, uh, I do the uh, not so dog dry and cure method. I like to call it. I, I dried and cured for years the wrong way. Right, I, I would take it off the stem and leave a little bit of stem on it, and, and I would lay it out. I would I wouldn't put a fan on it, but I would put a fan in the room. But not so dog, y'all might know him. The dude to me is a legend. Right, he made the Mendo perps. Not so dog is right. He used to be on the uh, Breeders Syndicate. I used to watch that podcast religiously. It was like my it was my like my go to every week. I had to watch that for genetics research. I thought that Matt Wright, even though he wasn't much to listen to, but the dude knew his stuff. Like, he was smart, man. He knew his stuff. So Matt Wright and Not So Dog, these two knew their stuff. Like, and Not So Dog told me a way he does it, right? He hangs it for a certain time. Then after he hangs it, he takes it down. He leaves it, whole plant. And then he cuts it up in sections. Cuts it up in sections. And then he lays it in brown paper bags. Then he rolls those brown paper bags up and puts them in contact and puts all of them in a contractor bag. But you leave it on the stem. You leave it on the stem when you put it in that brown paper bag and you let it cure in the brown paper bag with the whole leaves and everything. Like when I jerk my whole stem out, the whole leaves and everything will be on it. And it just be just, you can just resin smell it. Like the cure of my, it's totally give myself a hundred percent a lot better the way my smoke is the way that not so dog showed me how to do it Let people it sleep on that brown paper bag man that brown paper bag is crucial because what that does it makes a microclimate where the humidity can still escape but very slowly i didn't know that marco i didn't know yeah. that uh, yeah, not so dog explained that to me i didn't know that part right? i didn't know that mm -hmm. That weed cures from the stem. I didn't know all this stuff. I just thought that you just cut it up, dry it, cure it, no big deal. You put it in jars. Not so dog really sat down and explained that part to me, how that microclimate works, how it and then when you get it cured, then you put it in a jar. 
That's how not until it's ready to smoke, you can put it in a jar. That's how I look yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're at, you're at, yeah, pretty much mm -hmm. same. Yes. Yep, same thing. Well, yeah. I, all right. Well, that's that's what's up. What uh, what else? You what else? Anything else, man? You want to talk about? I mean, I just so like to run. Like we kind of came full circle, bro. I like to shout mm -hmm. them out, man. They've been like uh, I like to send a couple of like people like Cutting Edge Solutions, like Crop Salt. These dudes have been good to me, man. They've sent me stuff when they didn't have to. They. Like, those dudes have been good to me, man. Like, I think that there's just, if, if anybody's looking for high-end synthetic salts, a lot of people don't use them. But if you know what you're doing with them, they can absolutely change your game. I believe with, I believe that silica and calcium, add these to your environment, add these to your folder feeds, these will change. I didn't do this stuff until up to four years ago. I was a straight 10, 10, 10, put it in the ground, top feed banana water so stuff like that i never used real organic in, until the last three years till i really started going indoors myself and i it's blew me away how much that like using uh stuff like silica calcium all this stuff is just how it how it changes the plant how how much like when you micro feed from the top the difference in your flower will make you know it just blows me away man well wait till you start getting into making all those things in a, in a natural way using things like horsetail and shredded bamboo for that's that's for silica stuff like that then that to me that's that's that increases it even more because i yeah. feel like man, a salt grow, yeah you can grow wonderful if you can but you i feel like you grow better once you go live in soil you know it's just you can a always do a little better. With my thing. I'm scared to go live so indoors. I don't think I don't know if I could organically do it good enough. I don't think I know enough about the soil to really dive into it. That's why I don't do it. Cause yeah, I, yeah, I'm not that smart when it comes to soil. I just know like the what to feed it, when to feed it. But I've seen some fire weed come out of some organic soil, bro. My dad, that's all he does is like just we, we on a farm. And it's mm -hmm. manure. That's it. Chicken mm -hmm. shit from the top. That's it. That's the reason those plants come in, burn up. Brian, you seen the other day? It was scalded up because he put too much chicken shit from the top and then fed it with water. When mm -hmm. I turned his chicken shit was straight with water and fed it and burned them slap up. Yeah, he does, but he, but he grows good weed though. Hey, I wanted to uh, ask you a question. Like, since you have those connections and have seen through your father and stuff. This day and age, where do you feel like a lot of those genetics ended up outside of the people that you had mentioned? Like, are there... Um... The only person I've seen that produce anything like my dad, like I'm growing stuff out here right now from CSI archive and all that stuff. And my dad's genetics are still superior to theirs. Now, I'm not saying nothing about theirs. I'm just saying that my dad's genetics have not been released to be worked out. That's all. My dad has had this... He, the last, let's say he made a round of seeds in 2014. Let's say he's had this plant since 2000. Let's say he's nine, uh, 99. Let's say that, right? And he made those seeds, but those seeds have been sitting in the refrigerator, unworked, un, untouched, right? Those seeds have not been hoard out. They've not been touched. They've not been worked through. So you're going to find superior stuff. You, that's why. That's why when I send seeds to people, I tell them, keep your eyes open because you're going to see something that you've not seen before because these seeds was made 10 years ago, 15 mm -hmm. years ago. You know, you're going to see stuff. Like, I got a plant right now that looks, it looks uh, like a, it's come out of a, a prehistoric age. You know, the big leaves, the just it swallows everything. I put it beside. Just giant Afghani, short, fat, base, skunk. You can see it. It's an Afghan. It's a skunk. It's that's where your skunk lies, I believe. Your fire skunk. That's why I think that JJ is the. I believe that people like him is the key. People that like JJ at Top Dog and Skunk VA, Duke Diamond. I think these boys are the key to skunk. I think they have the skunk, and they just gotta keep popping seeds. And one of them are gonna find it. And when they find it, it's gonna blow up because they, Virginia, is more known for skunks than Kentucky is. Like, I couldn't tell you how many times I, people has told me, Virginia, 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 you know? And it's right well, there. We got I can be to Virginia in 10 minutes, 15, 
or is it 20? Somewhere like that. It's it's under a half hour. Are you close to Johnson City area out there? No, I go Johnson. to Letcher County. You know, the Virginia, West or is it Virginia, or is it West Virginia? Letcher County. Oh, okay. no. You know, right there on the Virginia, West Virginia. It's West Virginia. Letcher okay. County and West Virginia. I'm right beside Letcher. I All right. Well, you're in the North, north part of Kentucky. Yeah, well, more like Northeast. Yeah, yeah, south, yeah. I call it Southeast. It or Southeast. Yeah, yeah, Southeast. Yeah, Southeast. Yeah, Southeast. Yeah, Southeast. Yeah, Southeast. yeah. yeah okay. my God, on West Virginia. So we seen a lot of that, like that Hatfields, and the, that's all we heard. Like we had a clone around here; they could call it the Hatfield for the longest time because it come out of Virginia. So they called it the Hatfield. It was a beast, bro. It was a beast. Man, I had a one of my orders was to a dude in West Virginia. His last name was Hatfield. Yeah. I was like, damn. I wonder if he's like one of them. <laughs> yeah, I've got keys into him. Yeah, hundred percent. Hatfields and McCoys. Yeah, I got. Well, man. Like a, you know, this is this is good, man. I wish you know, you know, you could get deeper into them genetics, and but that that's good, man. I appreciate you know that that you sharing, you know, what you do. I think the oldest ones I've got is in the eight. You know that I um, think the oldest seeds I've seen so far is two thousand eight. They had a little sticker tag. I seen two thousand and eight was the last time was the oldest seeds I've seen in the fridge. Like so, I've got seeds that go back that far. I know two thousand eight. So you really want the seeds to get in the hands of somebody that is going? You know, yeah, they want yeah. Them. I'm not trying to charge nothing. I'm not trying to sell the seeds. As you boys know, I got two. I got you, 2014, 2021. Same one of you, Brian. We'll each of them, both of them. You look at the seeds, analyze them, see how big, black, and brown they look like. Somebody said they look like, uh, how they put it, mice nuts. It's, that's how large the seeds are. They look like mine. But that's only because they've been made outside, right? Outdoors, you mm -hmm. get larger seeds, I'm, I'm assuming, anyway. But they are big seeds. Put like five on a dime, I think. Seven or six of them. Huge. Show me some seeds. I'll grow them, yeah. Oh, I got y'all packages together. We'll send you both packages. Y'all can look at them together, see that they're the same. Like, when somebody sees me the seeds, I can tell if they've been messed with. You know, when you got 10 seeds from the same plant, they should all look the same. You shouldn't have five little ones, three big ones, two round ones. They should all be the same color, the same shape. They should all look identical to me. If they come well, F2 would be diverse, though. F2s, you won't get that uniformity, right? Right. Well, I didn't know that. See, I didn't know that either. I didn't. Know. I know you get so many like, different things out of seed, but I didn't know that part. I just, I just don't like seeds that don't look alike. I like them all mm -hmm. to look, you know, structured uniquely you got that big hole in the back I, I think seeds outside is a lot better than seeds inside i don't know i just i think out i think that's the future is outdoors that's the future of this cannabis plant i believe with all my heart all well, natural that's where the best that's where the best smoke grows <laughs> outdoors i think the future is that. kind of that hybrid that system that hybrid where you take the best of both protection and things of indoor and then yeah, the sun I, believe of outdoor. I believe that too i believe that outdoors is superior to indoors but that's just me but i've been doing outdoors for so long i just know what i'm doing outdoors indoors i'm just now really taking off myself well it takes time man keep popping them seeds i love popping seeds bro that's the only good thing about this whole thing right it's, the, it's just looking at plants looking through them right just looking at plants that's the only good thing i like doing selecting plants that's what they should say right when they say it's plant selectors not a plant breeder yeah exactly oh somebody in the chat said that 80 skunk had bigger seeds they did i sent him probably too i probably yeah i just sent a bunch of seeds out to a bunch of people right to each ones of each and that's the dude to, he said damn these things look like my snuts. I was like, yeah, bro, he does good work. You know, my dad does. But you've been doing work for 25 years. You just know what to do. You know, he don't do nothing special. Oh, you know that. Do that old pollen shake. Watch pollen go everywhere. That's all he does. He don't he don't do nothing special. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyway. Now, he must, because I try to do it and I made it 
people laugh at me because I tried to make seeds last year and I made a hundred seeds because all I made. I did everything he I did everything he did. And I made a hundred seeds and explained that. Well, you thought you you didn't you didn't end the grow. You know what I mean? When you end the grow, you ain't gonna finish. So that's why I didn't. I mean, I thought I did everything too. I I used a paintbrush and everything. I thought I did it right, but I guess, you know, back to the drawing board. Yeah, but 100 seeds, shit, if I'm looking at, I mean, that's still a nice handful of seeds if you want to do some work, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not like you can't set up shop and start selling right. packs, but you can, you right. can get the work with that 100. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Very true. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want everybody to just know like the truth, like who got the seeds and who got the cuts. Like I've sent the cuts and seeds out to multiple people. I'm not trying to hide anything. Like I'll tell you who I sent seeds. I'll tell you who I sent cuts and you can get them to come together and show their genetics to each other. I don't care. I just, my dad made these seeds. He's been making seeds since I was a little kid. I've been running around. And I just want people to realize that skunks are not dead. They're in the Kims and the Sours and the Afghans. You just got to know where to look. You pop enough seeds, you'll find them. People like JJ, people like Skunk VA, Duke Diamond, these boys, well, these boys got it. I mean, you just got to keep, I mean, somebody's going to find this. Somebody will lock it down. Probably somebody at Floor Farm knows. Just a joke. Just a joke. That was a joke. I was only joking. Well, you it's on you, bro. Speak your own mind, but, you know, uh, two two wrongs don't make a right, you know what I'm saying? So no, I'm, a, I'm a kind of if we're gonna do Judge Mathis, you know what I mean? I kind of lean towards that way. Uh there's a little bit of wrong on both sides, you know what I'm saying? It's unfortunate y'all couldn't make it work because I was excited to see the skunk. Should we talk to him oh, about man, it on this? Grows but, such good flower too, bro. Like from my yeah. from my observation, his plants were stellar. Like dude was I was like, this is gonna kill it, you know. Oh, so, bro, bring it on. That was just a disappointment like as like a fan of growing, basically, you know, as bro. a fan of cannabis and seeing you know new shit popping off. Um, that was that was the biggest thing for me, and I'm sure for you too. Although you were oh, probably man, counting it, some bro. beans. Yeah, I was used to you know, I was used to sending seeds to people that before this, like I said, I'd been sending these seeds out to people like old school chronic. He made the 96 Kentucky skunk and he's actually sells them right now. Uh, there's a guy named Jay Diesel. That's got a mom of the, uh, of my 96 that looks identical to the original mom. I've been trying to get a cut of that. He found seeds and that, and I sent seeds, like I said, total health connection, epiphanomics. I sent them all over the place and everybody I was sending seeds to was coming back with good stuff. Like they were finding fire. And then I sent the cut to, I just thought that, it was time for them to really to take off. I thought they was going to start taking off and, you know, but it wasn't like I hadn't sent them out to many people before him. He wasn't the only one that got those seeds. Like I said, they'd been a few people way before him. I'd sold the cut seeds each. So they couldn't say I was taking seeds and trying to sell them off. I wanted them to realize, look, here's the seeds. Here's the cut that made those seeds sent them to do just sent them to not two different people but four different people and all four of them first said he said he said had skunk and then something happens they get mad and they block me that's now that's how that happens okay you were well, you probably was in their fucking dms i, I was definitely in their DM. i was definitely <laughs> in their dm the only one that got me blocked is old school comic He's the only one that talks to me. The rest of them, they got me blocked for some reason. But I was in their DMs. Yeah, I probably. You you up. send a you were heavy handed on the DM. I had to give you a little break, so I will tell you that. Don't come on so strong, you know, and that type of thing too. You know what I'm saying? I know I was told, me. <laughs> <laughs> told me a little bit soon. That's all good, man. Um, you seem like you got the right intentions. I mean, hey, man, you yeah, fucking. Man. You fucking went to jail, stay clean. You got a kid, stay out of jail for him. You know, all that kind of shit, you know. And then yeah, man, I love it. Like I said, I love my life, man. I grow weed. I get to grow weed for free all day, every day for myself. I don't grow weed. Like, where does craft start and stop? That, right? That's what it, that this industry needs to talk about. Where does craft stop? 
Like how big of a grove will it get till you say, Oh, it's not craft no more. Like where does that stop and start? Like you get these large industry that's growing, that's pushing out this THC VA, whatever they call it. Like there's head shops around here selling THC VA right now and has it. I don't know if y'all been hearing about this shit. Like, I ain't I really know. on it because we're legal out here. So I ain't about, I mean, I'm not yeah, like they're selling THC VA here. And it's weed cut early, I reckon, right? It's like all it is is weed took three weeks early. I think and they it, ended that in Virginia, the Delta H stuff. Yeah, see, it's it's taking off here in Hazard now. It's finally starting to take off. So, so you know, the head shops here are starting to sell flour, THC, VA. So, if you got your finger in head shops, you could sell them flour, right? Like, I've got a head shop that buys flour. And they sell it as it's THC. Gotta be low, it's got to be low THC, though. Well, that's what they sell. Well, they sell it for that, right? But they don't really, they, they, it's a local community store that, that that's a gray it. area. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, so I said everything's, and it's good to go to jail here in small towns if you got a good lawyer. That's all I can tell you. So I love <laughs> small towns. Yeah. But hey, they're going to, if they watch this shit, they're going to see your ass. They, they, that massing ain't going to fool the small town. <laughs> okay. They, they definitely know me around here. The uh, 911 dispatcher stopped the other day. He's like, look, I know you sell weed. I know you smoke weed, but you can't do that. I had him sunbathing out in the yard. And he's just a 911 dispatcher. I thought he got back from the academy. He said, I just got back from the academy last week. So he's a state trooper. Now he's my neighbor. So, I mean, it's not like they really say nothing to us around here. They don't care about us growing weed. Like he told me, as long as you ain't selling fentanyl or selling oxys, or if you got a meth lab, as long as you don't do none of that stuff, you can grow all the weed you want, pretty much what he was saying. Grow all the weed you want, just don't put it in my face. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's good here in Hazard right now. It's good. They do, they really decriminalized it. Like I'm on probation, allowed to smoke weed. I just got to have a receipt showing it come out of another state like we've got the only governor that i know of guys that openly said that we can go across state lines buy flour and bring it back if we got a receipt the governor openly said that so i'm like okay balls open the bad thing is is there's not flour in a hundred and a hundred miles that i've found worth buying this is god's honest truth I've not seen a dispensary that's got flour as good as the home growers. Uh, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You know we do it, but yeah, you got yeah. You just started watching us. We 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 we're way better than the dispensaries, man. Like I couldn't believe it, bro. I was expecting to see fire coming down these dispensaries, like especially like in Michigan. Mm -hmm. It was disappointing. It broke my heart. I thought I was going to see nothing but fire on both. I'm like, bro, this is this now. Is Michigan not, grows fire now. They, they I thought they fire, had, but the dispensaries are where the bullshit happened. The dispensaries, though, them home growers are getting their hands in it and they cutting it. And the next thing you know, that's why I say we it's hard to get good flour unless you are growing it yourself. If you are, it's hard to get it, man. Around here in Hazard, you got to order that shit off the internet. It ain't no good. Yes, sir. It's still no good, man. You got you to gotta produce it yourself right now. It's just. Unless you want to, I don't know, man. It's just hard to find good flour right now. It's hard. I believe it's harder to find good flour now than it was 10 years ago. Good flour. Just, just well, you're hard. feeling prohibition, man. You know what true. I mean? Very you know, true. If you come to Virginia, you might have better luck or go to, but you know, but like you said out there, man, people probably like your dad's age group, them guys are aging out. Did any of the sons are, are like you or any of the sons doing doing that work to fill in? You know, maybe, maybe not. So that might be why y'all ain't growing that fire anymore, you know, as much. That's true, bro. So I said we don't see the only fire I see is what I produce myself. That's it. Like indoor, I grow good weed outdoors on because I know how to dry and cure proper. And you can get good genetics. If you get good genetics, well, it's simple, right? Your genetics and your environment equals your phenol. That's pretty simple. That's a pretty simple equation. If anybody can do any math. Your I don't know which one would come first. You I don't know which one's most important. I really I've never thought about that. But I believe you gotta have good in genetics, 
good environment and you and if you grow it d- d- decent you don't got to even put that much work in just decent work and you, as long as you dry and cure it right man you'll be okay yeah the better genetics the easier it is on you genetics that has to come first because if you don't have genetics you can't you don't have shit i'll take that i'll take that so genetics before environment yeah because but they go hand in hand but if you grow a plant that's shit in a great environment and it's going up you know they still ain't gonna be great i'll take that one yeah so that's why the the genetics are so important and then like a lot of the guests we have always talk about that old pool of genes like you said if you got stuff from 208 you know from back there man that's valuable stuff just for the difference in the gene pool compared to what's out there right now you know what i'm saying so i think it's going to take somebody like you oh somebody that's looked through a lot of plants for the past 10 years Uh, yeah i just can't send them to somebody that just started looking through plants like it's going to take somebody that's been putting in work for a good solid 10 years right to really know what they're looking at because you you you've seen plants 10 years ago you know what plants look like that they don't look like they do now like that one i got out there she just yeah. you can just tell she swallows everything superior yeah. genetics they have that look and i'll say it i'll say damn that's got that old school look what, you know you know what it is when it just looks like fire even though it might not look like the shit that's out <laughs> yeah, there that's every time but every still time. look like fire still look like fire yeah my black hate all right man so i mean you know this is your show we gave you the you know platform i think it's been flowing pretty good i wish you knew you know it's hard because you know a lot of stuff goes so far back you know and your dad being the main point guy i get that yeah Um, but you're right close to him man so you're close to the genetics so really you know it really came from florida if i would guess and right because the plants he was told the plant came out of florida like he was told that like the this weed flowers coming out of florida these plants come out of florida he was told it come out of florida so and he was also t- said somebody mentioned supernaut said that it's but i've heard that supernaut creepy was the same thing i've heard those two was the same thing right mm. supernaut and creepy was the same thing but i believe it was just homegrown grew in florida because of that tropical environment down there that's where all your i believe homegrown i believe tropical environments like florida and california that's the reason those two places produced all that fire and then it bled off into places like kentucky georgia virginia but i believe it mainly came out of florida and california florida is where the skunk come from i believe is I, I believe that was on my heart from florida I would definitely say a lot of genetics in bulk came from Florida. I can a that. lot of them. I'd say just as much from Florida as from California. Fire. Fire genetics. Well, there's an argument there. You know, Florida Florida will definitely argue um, their fair share of genetics. You know, I Well, mean, they was doing they, indoor. Least indoor. They was blowing indoor up. We were getting flour from Florida by the pounds, 30 pounds every, every month. 30 pounds was coming down the pipeline, 30 cans, 30 cans, never under a pound. I was going to ask you, was that, was, was that outdoor cans or was that, was that indoor grown? I at, at, it, look, well, like I said, I, I didn't really see indoor at this time. So okay. I'm assuming it was outdoor, but it right, was, right, right. like I said, it was homegrown, mm-hmm. compressed into those cans. It was not press pot. I grew my share of Mexican import. I, this was not press pot. You didn't find seeds smashed up in it. There was no seeds. There was no, there was no stems. It was all flower trimmed properly, smashed into cans, sent down the pipeline by a group of. They, I can't say the bikers about sift up. I ain't gonna say their name because they still run a clubhouse in Hazard. They still run a clubhouse in Knott County, in Perry County. So I'm not gonna say their name, but they are the ones that is the reason of that plant being in my dad's hands they b- brought that those two plants up and it was in a solo cup wrapped up in two of them taped together two plants taped together in two solo cups and the flowers coming 30 pounds at a time so they they brought 30 cans plus those two plants in 99 was the, maybe i think 98 was the last run they did before they got in trouble 
I think 98 was the last cans we got was 99, maybe somewhere like that. But it was all coming from Florida. Every bit of it. And they had the can game running. Yeah. Somebody snitched. Yeah. 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 He's dead now, too. Hippie's his name. I want to tell you the name of the clubhouse, man, because I, I know you've heard of them. They're a decent sized clubhouse, and they got a clubhouse in Florida. They got a clubhouse in Knott County and has it. And I'd like to tell you the name of it, man, but I can't do that. I can't. I'm not obligated to tell you the name of a MC that <laughs> yeah, I'm no, not. Don't, don't snitch. Yeah. Because... Yeah. I'm not a share. I'm not part of the club. We I'm don't not even to... need to know, bro. We ain't yeah. Appreciate know. it. Yeah. Uh -uh, we ain't it won't be know. hard to find out, though, because they're the only ones got a clubhouse around here and in Florida. Mm hmm. And so, like, I like for those dudes, I'm not trying to get them recognized, but Hippie, God rest his soul, he's dead. Kenneth White, Ray Mack, Johnny J Joseph, some's locked up. Kenneth White, I don't know if he's still locked up, but if there's people listening to my conversation and you know these, then you can go ask them yourself. Ray Mack, still alive. Leatherwood, go look him up, you know. That's all I can tell you, man. I can't, I can tell you names places and everybody's name i sent my seats to and i sent my clones to and i can tell you who i sent them to and i don't know why what's up with them i don't know why they did what they did you know but i ain't trying to lie about nothing well talk to your pops man see if you'll get off off of the, some of them genetics because and it, it, it's just more about getting it out there man it, it, no matter what they are you know That's if you can I do it in the right way you know, you can help the community as well, adding to that gene sure, pool. Took the cut. It out there, man. You know, it, it, it hurt me when I stole the cut. Hurt me real bad. Really took my trust off of him. But honestly, I just got fed up with him hoarding that down. I mean, it's just, bro, it's so, like, I sent, like I said, it's just floor farm. I don't know if his died or not. He said it did. But I know the one that Piffonomics had. You can go back and read the post that he made. Uh, and Total Health Connections. You can go back on my old page and read. He about said he chopped it down. To be fair, yeah, he said yeah. he, he could have. Hey, hey, very possible. He could have. He showed the pictures he had. It was all chopped. I mean, that's what I'm saying, man. I mean, he was very upfront about his side of things, and that's why we were trying to say, like, yeah. Uh, hey, he, was, hey, at least that's Marco all and say. I. Uh, Look, man, Marco and I were just trying to have two people on. I thought maybe when we were discussing things, y'all might be able to figure it out because. I, I do want to see more like, uh, I guess, of more like that that kind of like old school culture, uh, potentially with like brighter minds, better equipment, maybe deeper pockets where those genetics can get out. Because that'd be fantastic, man. Those yeah. early days when you're talking about those genetics, those were the ones that allowed people to make a little money for themselves. Because all of the other stuff was either mids or brick weed, and people really mm -hmm. could tell the difference. Um, you know, we bought a facility here. Gone. You know, we own a facility here. We bought a facility, a six-digit facility. We dropped, my dad dropped six figures, but man, it's not like we ain't planning on, you know, it's not like we're not planning on making the move. It's just not come like, we, it's not going legal enough. Like, it's literally, mm -hmm. it's it's on that fine line of going legal but not legal. Like, you're scared to throw something up because you don't want to throw something up. And they come in and just wipe you out. It's not worth it. Like, it's. Okay, so, so y'all are like right on the verge of you. Everyone's like knowing it should be legal, but the laws hadn't really hit. Look, uh -huh. Big Creek Elementary Grade School. Big, that's the name of the facility that we purchased, a school. My dad purchased a grade school. Six digits for this school, waiting for it to go legal. Because somebody told him, before you can go legal, you must own a facility. Like, if they go legal and you don't own a large enough facility, they won't let you go in. They won't let you jump into it. So he goes, gets a facility two years ago, three years ago, thinking it's going legal. I'm talking to guys getting ready to do some collab. I'm, get, I'm getting ready to pay dudes to come in and to, to make sure we, I get the right genetics and waiting for it to go legal. Still ain't. So we've been three years waiting, sitting with a security guard over there, paying electric, whatever, waiting for it to go legal. That's all. We just wait. Well, next time you wanted that cut from your dad, if your dad's like mine, my, my, you could just say, "Man, pops, let me buy that cut off you. Give me give you a couple hundred dollars." You know what I mean? Sure did that. Like that. You better pay you that probably, man twice. 
No, I know, right? <laughs> Three times, dude. You owe interest. I mean, bro, I just did that. Like, fuck, man. I thought yeah. he was my dad. You know, I thought I was, I guess you get that in self entitlement where you're a son, you know. And just going, I'll yeah, I it. feel you like that's mine too because it's his. But no, nah, yeah. that's his. And he let you know, I'm sure. Yeah, he did real quick. Uh huh. Yeah, he did. I messed up. I think growing up poor sometimes builds that uh, never enough mindset. And so when you feel that way, I guess, you know, you, you choose to do certain things. Uh, I've learned mm. later in life that you're going to pay tenfold for whatever you took, man. Um, and maybe this stuff that has gone on where you have, uh, it seemed like pretty bright connections, man, to be honest, you know, like certain things were popping, but for whatever reason, those genetics, um, maybe because of a metaphysical type atmosphere, uh, didn't work out for you. And so maybe think about those kind of things. Like, I think they also come with some politics behind. I think he might have got a couple because I was told by a couple of high people in the in the in the industry. I was told by a couple individuals in the industry that they they're pretty big in the industry. They said, "Man, he can't be he can't be claiming Kentucky skunk when he's not from Kentucky." So I figured somebody. It's there's a lot of politics with Kentucky skunk. Like a lot of people get upset and jealous if you're not from Kentucky. And you're claiming to have Kentucky skunk. A lot of people from Kentucky get jealous over that. I'm sure, like Virginia, like if there's certain Virginia cuts, there's probably a certain Virginia, certain set of crew that don't want that Virginia cut to get to a certain, you know, other people's hands. Yeah, that's like the Afghani. That's why yeah. we got Virginia. That's like a cult classic. You know what I mean? Like. And when you talk about it, it's, it's always it'll go, you know, oh, oh, no, that's not the way. It's this way. You know, it's one of yeah. those things, but it's one that Virginia kind of holds. Yeah, the Virginia, Virginia. Cut, yeah, stuff like that. I believe he got, yeah, I believe he might have had a lot of, like, I believe that where he was getting a lot of hassle from it. So he's probably getting DMs from a lot of individuals saying, probably getting a lot of hate DMs from people out of Kentucky that was giving him a hard time. So I can understand that. So I, I don't blame him on that front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Virginia Beach. Again. Yeah, I was getting a lot of hate DMs from people from Kentucky. The reason I know that people were DMing me like, bro, how can you send him that stuff? That's the reason I got my account shut down. My old Gorilla Girl account was because of him. Because I sent him that cut. And the dude named Kentucky High Grade, I'm not I'm not gonna go ahead and tell you who it is. Kentucky High Grade moved to Michigan, been trying to get my dad's genetics for 15 years. You know who you are, Kentucky High Grade. You know it. And uh and I wouldn't send them to him. So he's like, bro, you sent him to floor farm, but you won't send him me, blah, blah, blah. Next thing I know, very next, like it wasn't an hour later, my account is blocked. Like you ain't going to do nothing but look at it. Damn. Yeah. Like I, I'll throw people's names out there. I don't give two shit. Listen, you're, you're in the legal game. It's not ratting. If you can grow weed, how am I ratting on you, bro? If you're allowed to go out there and grow weed, how's that snitching? Well, don't right? be a snitch. Like, how's that snitching? You're allowed to grow weed. I'm in the black market. I'm not allowed to grow weed. You're you just got to start getting your money up front, bro. Make your deal, get your payment, and then that way, whatever happens, happens. You know, you getting caught up on the front end and not, you know, and then it's hanging you out on the backside. You, you're you getting caught up in the – and you're Politics. counting seeds, what you're doing. You're counting all them seeds that you can be making money off of where you kind of – I think that's probably the wrong focus. If you focus yeah, on yeah. getting your daddy's genetics into somebody's goods hands, then that other part is gonna come to you. You know what I mean? Because that person's not gonna fuck you, or it ain't gonna something's not gonna happen. I'm not just saying that's pertaining to you and Heston. I'm just saying when you meet that right person, y'all gonna click and you can go, you know, hopefully be successful with the shit. I just want people to grow them and hopefully find something they just don't just just don't but like so like if I seen you all something and you find something stellar fat big broad that smells like a skunk's ass you ain't gotta block me just say hey look I found something that smells like a skunk's ass I'm gonna work with it okay fine you don't you don't even gotta represent like that was floor farm doing all that representing and Pippin, they they the one make some I never made a statement I said it's an Afghani Kentucky skunk do what you will with it next thing I know you you blew like you're right i got hung up on the bells and whistles lost a lot of good genetics doing it i hope it don't happen to nobody else 
that's mm -hmm. what I want to come out of this platform right here. I don't want nobody to lose something that they are that they have close to them or they've been working on. Them. Thank God that they wouldn't my genetics and I've been working on them for 10 years and been really like my baby. Or I would die like it's Black Hayes. Two years I've been with her, working with her. Uh, every indoor outdoor I, that would have broke my heart if i would have lost that plant so what were, so what then all right fast forward what would you do on the next one to make sure the deal you feel better about it and works out in I'm your not, favor i'm not going to make no deals like you said there ain't gonna be no handshake deals there's not going to be no high hopes there's not going to be no excitement no bells and whistles it's just going to be a straightforward look if you find something, you do. If you don't, you don't. I'm not getting hung up on that. I got hung, I, I just wanted a seat at the table, man. I got hung up on having a seat at the table with all these big guys. Thought that I could squeeze in with some Kentucky genetics because I'm from Kentucky. I've been here my whole life. I thought that since I've been here my whole life, it, it was my right. Like, I had a right. But really, I don't. Like, I, I've not put enough time in, really. So I got to take my seat just like everybody else. Uh, you know, if uh, if if these genetics get out and if somebody finds something and they give me a platform, so be it. I'll, it's my dad's anyways. It's not even mine. I don't. I didn't make them. So I just don't want anybody to lose their intellectual property, as they was to call it, your IP or whatever they call it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't work on something, I don't want you to lose it. Yeah, we don't want you to lose it, and and you got it. You still got it, so you can just yeah, especially small know. time home growers, because yeah. that crushed some people's spirit, bro. Some people I've seen take autos, the first grow, destroy it. like they don't even know what they're doing, and they mess up, and they not grow no more. Like they get a bad experience in their mouth because some auto autos are not for beginners, guys. That's the worst thing ever is when they're trying to push autos off to beginners. Autos are for people that know how to grow. Like, because if you do something wrong with an auto, it's it's done for. Mm, not not forgiven on that end. I can feel. No, you. that's but it was weird that because in Virginia, everybody was growing autos when Virginia went legal. Like it was a really popular thing. It was like everybody thought it was easier. I don't know. I never. You all had one. a good auto. What was his name out there? I grew some auto seed from. He's from Virginia. He but he ain't got an auto company. Hell, he started on seeds here now, about three years ago. He's from Virginia. I used to talk to him. He used to mm. make auto seeds, real big auto breeder out of Virginia at one time. He was on seeds here now, but something happened. I mm. can't think of his name. Something happened. He got shut down. been an interesting day my friends yeah man i appreciate y'all yeah. let me get on here and speak anytime man i like i like talking i just wish we had more like-minded individuals i could talk like this around here you know well we got you out there man so shit when you see folks that like me and brian follow like this we have our own little kind of little community on the show you know what i mean a lot of guys in the chat are good guys to follow they're good growers um you know, well, I've noticed people. that y'all are the only ones still talking about the homegirls and his necks. And I watch about all, pod, like Adam Dunn. I like Adam Dunn's podcast, but it's just, he don't, he's for three hours, he don't talk about but crazy nonsense. Like it's not even about weed no more. The Breeder Syndicate podcast was talking about genetics. He, they were bringing on some killer dudes talking about old school genetics. Uh, and now it's just talking. I don't really, it's not really, I don't know what happened to that show. It's just, I don't know what happened to it. It used to be a killer podcast, and now there's no podcast that really talk about genetics and the home grower, but the future cannabis podcast. You are pretty much. Is yeah, the FCP. One. There's a bunch of good shows. Uh, bunch of, bunch of y'all yeah. do good work, good content. All right, man. Well, shit, I appreciate that you stopping by, man. Look, we did. We talked to all kind of folks here, man. Little small guys, big guys. Um, I feel like every show we had you know at least you got a little something you could grab onto and move forward with it was cool hearing about the skunks and stuff like that um but yeah anybody, man, man, if you won't see just dm me tell them just dm me if you if you will pay shipping i will send you some seed 
There you go. With no expectations. <laughs> no, no expectations. Right. No expectations. I don't want whoop. <laughs> I don't want whoop. And I don't want to go back to jail. Right. That's what's up. I appreciate you all letting me have this platform. Really, guys. Good yeah, man. It's good talking to you, man. And, uh, you know, all right, hey, you boys have to get the hazard. Look me up. Look, look all right, man. Well, get the look me up, man. We ain't for it. All right, bro. Well, take it easy. We'll let you go ahead and sign off, and then we're going to uh, sign off here in a couple minutes. All right. What I do, just hit this red button. It says leave. Yes, sir. All right. Then you have a good day, gentlemen. All right, man. Peace. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, again, I, I hope that people see that this is the reason why uh, – we don't give guests any questions. Uh, it's all, everything is off the dome. Uh, if you know what's going deep, then you know. If you don't know, then you know. We we were hoping to dive deeper today. Obviously, those kind of things. But we also try to give yeah. the platform without uh, being a certain way. Um, and obviously, that came across as, to some people today as, as something else, uh, which is fine. Uh, yeah. Because at the end of the day, man, if you're telling me you're making promises to your family. Uh, and I salute you. Uh, that that means something to me over here. That's actually how I changed my entire life as I made uh, promises to my wife. And so that resonated with me. And that is why this show resonated with me is because when people don't do that shit, uh, it says a lot too, bro. So mm -hmm. I think both, both sides uh, probably misunderstood things. Both sides obviously see... I don't know how to say it other than very emotional in text messages and stuff. And that's the part mm -hmm. that Marco and I have talked about over the years is uh, that, that, that that's more than telling, man, that's almost screaming, especially when it's uh, constant. And so, yeah, man, I, I hope that more people see that there's so many smoke and mirrors on this stuff that you should always go to the source. And so if there are big cannabis events, and you mm -hmm. see that a big time breeder, whoever it is, whoever you're a cheerleader for, that you spend the money to go into that expo, go up, wait. If it is a big time person, probably have to wait in line, wait in line for those genetics, pay for those genetics. You probably have the time frame while you're buying it to ask one or two questions. And then you know where you're getting it from because... Uh, Another thing too, man, if you don't have money today, you don't have money tomorrow. I've never seen anybody that was asking for fronts that all of a sudden just started paying everybody back. And, and that's something else that I think the <laughs> cannabis community could learn a lot from. Is there's no real like uh, stockbroker that's talking about, you know, fronting his own money. You know, I mean, the money is always there and it's put into uh, the wheel, if you will. And that is what cannabis is about and genetics. So if you give your genetics to somebody, I think in, in hindsight, in reality, you have to realize that they're going to do whatever they want to do with them. And just because you tell mm -hmm. somebody to do something uh, that they might not do that, they might not see it as that way. They might not have understood when you guys were talking what you were saying. And so I think that's a lot of the, the real pettiness that comes from it is pure miscommunication. Two dudes that obviously were vibing on some level. Um, and, and we've seen it multiple times, any dudes, not even just these, you know, cannabis people in general, they vibe, mm -hmm. something happens, one person feels a certain way, and then all, all bridges are burned. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm living on this island. Uh, and that's why I'm saying, if you're in the cannabis space, and you are not doing things on up, above board, uh, eventually, you're going to get found out. And if you don't think that's true, look at belief. In my opinion, he was at the top of the game as far as marketing, branding, getting people to hype his stuff, talking ridiculous numbers and getting, uh, I guess, newbies and stuff to pay for those genetics. Uh, that's a hustle. And that's what cannabis has kind of always been. And I think more of the newer growers don't realize that. And so it's harder to pick up on that. And um, this show, I, I think, also shows that uh, you can grow for a long time. That doesn't necessarily mean that you really understand the plant. And that's why newer growers, I hope that you see, like, if you really are a student of this, you put in the time and effort, you are uh, trying to be the apex of your skill level at your year and all that kind of stuff. There's still plenty of room for you uh, because there's so many people out there that have just been doing this, probably know products, brands, know how to flip certain things at certain times, but don't understand plant biology. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and that's again where you guys can have a window with that because you don't necessarily have to understand a, a, a living soil system but if you're sitting here watching podcasts with us uh, on Wednesdays, then I already know that you're above the game with being able to search and find certain things. And so, uh, again, this just opens up to when it's live, uh, you get to see it real and raw. And if you don't know certain things, it comes out. And if you're miscommunicating or something, I think is uh, from the outside looking in, to be honest, it seemed like maybe some things were said that, that weren't true and then some miscommunication. And... Uh, here we are having a podcast about it, Marco. I know, man. I think we got to the bottom of it pretty good. I mean, he even came out at the end. It's, you know, hey, man, I was kind of counting seeds, counting my money, a little getting ahead of myself. And that happens. And then, you know, when the shit get, you got in your mind, this thing's going to make X, Y, Z. Well, it don't happen. Now that's what, you know, kind of gets shit twisted. And um, like you said, man, no each side, nobody was squeaky clean. Uh, but it also was not as bad um, as as a you know anybody tried to make it look at first. Like I don't think Heston stole the man's genetics. We saw him; he grew out. He he had the artwork thing going. He had the leaves and the artwork. The yeah, I was buying. Sorry, he had the receipts thing. for his side of things. And it's Correct. Like, oh, okay. Correct. But and so I'm not gonna. Word. Yeah, I'm not gonna like bash Heston in that way because I feel like he did what he was supposed to do. Hey, man, I had to tear the grow down. Sure, no one's happy watching it, whatever, whatever. But you had to do what you had to do. You know what I mean? Um, I do, you know, think it's important though, man, as, you know, like you said, family, man, if you feel yourself, like I shouted out Joshua earlier, he's taking a little break off uh, social, and I imagine I won't be seeing him in 36 hours uh, back on there. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, that's all I'm saying, man. When you take that break, just, just cut it, bro. Like, this is just your phone. It's just a phone people. If the real ones, Brian has my number. If I'm off IG, you can text me right now. Other ones out there in the chat have my number. Um, the real ones have your number, you know what I mean? So if you get step away, step away, let all this shit still, you can argue back and forth. And when you come back on, it'll be the same shit. So, um, you know, the, the, yeah, take a break, man. You know, go enjoy family. That's how I look at it. Yeah, if that's really what you're about, then then make it about that. And um, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, man, this is fun for us. Um, you guys know how we feel about this. You guys know that no one pays us to do this. We are blessed to be able to be on Peter's platform. You know, this is our show. There's a variety of different shows that are on the platform. So blessed to have peter on here blessed to have other people's others opinions uh i'll be fair i i feel like there is a lot of hate in the community for the gentleman that we interviewed today those are just yeah. seem be, just seem to be facts based on what was being said in the comments so it's really no disrespect to east kentucky however you lived your life bro if you're truly moving forward same thing with heston if you're truly moving forward that's kind of what we were trying to get at and help the home grower and help people that are moving in that direction. Uh, because uh, I speak it for me personally, I've been through that where I felt like the commercial game is ridiculous. If you don't really have anybody on your side of things and it's you versus the suits, um, it's, it's a brutal, brutal experience. And yeah. um, I, I can understand where there's a lot of frustration with that. Uh, and I, again, that's why from the mountaintops, I try to talk about if you have, really good soil skill sets cannabis isn't really the only option and isn't the most uh i would say viable option anymore for some of you in certain states uh to be able to just build soil systems and sell them compost uh the microgreens we've talked about wedding flowers there's so many different things uh, i even saw gino malcolm he moved he no longer lives in colorado but he's getting into the microgreens and That's i know right. i talked on his couch just smoking his fantastic flower man uh, where we were just kind of talking those things. And he knows that shit way better than, than I do. It's just the fact that he was already kind of thinking in that way. Like, um, you know, his skill sets is, I mean, he wins awards, you know, and that kind of thing. Yeah. But at the same time, he himself has been through so much that he can't really find work in that way uh, where it's uh, profitable as to kind of take care of your family. You know, mm -hmm. people wanted to grow cannabis because it gave you more of like a freedom. Like you go in there, you, you kind of get things done. Now it's not that way. Most people are expected to work seven days a week. Uh, they're golden handcuffs. Um, and mm -hmm. I think in hindsight, man, from 
from probably day one when I was like 14, 15 years old trying to figure out stuff and make money, real money, I guess, bill money. Uh, entrepreneurship is where it's at, man. If you start yeah. that very young, um, I think you're going to be able to find a, a higher success rate in life uh, because you have been able to hustle and, and flip cannabis. And this is just another example of why um, the home the home grower, the, it's almost like everything is stacked against them, especially if mm -hmm. you're living in a state where it's uh, it's not legal. Not only are you basically fucking over each other, uh, but the the police and stuff are always kind of finding out who the big dog is. And if he's talking in a real small southern town, everybody knows everything in that place. Oh, yeah. So there's no secrets going on. If they wanted to bust down your door, they, believe me, they'd be in there. Yeah. Find that lane, man. Find your own lane. That's all we ever talk about. Yeah, I like I see Gino move, man. I can sense the uh, everybody seems real happy where he's at too. You know what I mean? There's something about that when you make those chess moves, like you you guys sat on the couch talking about it years ago or whatever. He's working his chess moves, and finally, boom, he gets to make it happen. You know that that's the cool part of getting older in life is planning these things out and being able to live through them before you know you're like, damn, okay, I. I lived through that. I did that thing that I was thinking about doing when I was 20 something, you know, shit comes quick, man. Life goes, it goes pretty quick. So, you know, stay active, you know, keep doing shit. Yeah. You know, I think that guy though today, our, our guest, you know, like he seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. A lot of people I noticed, cause I work with you know, Northerners I work with Southerners I work with all kinds of people, but Sometimes Northerners get a thing where they think like Southerners because of their way they talk are not intelligent and things like that. And some of those guys, you know, it, it doesn't, it just, it's just the dialect, you know what I mean? And so um, don't let that fool you, you know what I mean? Um, you know, the guy went, he went through some shit, you know what I mean? Had a little drug thing, whatever. Some of our best friends have gone through drug issues and are staying clean and are still um, doing the right thing. So, as long as a man's on the positive track doing the right thing, um, you know, I think a lot of people on Instagram probably just, you know, jump to picking sides on things like, you know, kind of like you said, Brian, just sit back and watch. Like, I don't have to have a side on this. I'm just watching a tennis match. What's going on? You know, I'm going to see what happens here. Um, you don't have to have a side in everything. And, you know, sometimes you can just observe and, and see how it goes. I think the guy, I believe the guy that his dad has those genetics, you know, whether they were like worked and things to the point of we consider working in a genetics point of view, maybe not, maybe, but I think the pool of genetics is there, you know what I mean? And I think he's, he probably has something that he could, you know, work with. If he links up with the right person or, or even does it himself, cuts out that middleman, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, skunk is kind of elusive. It's out there. It has nostalgia for probably almost every 30 and above your age uh, cannabis smoker. There was just something to that. A sour diesel, you know, the San Bernardo Valley. There's just certain things that people that uh, have means uh, want to pay for. And skunk has always seemed to be one of those. Um, and so that's why... Um, I think more people, again, you got to do your research, hopefully find some expos and um, grow this stuff out for yourself. This was interesting, man. I, I don't think we've ever had a show before where I felt like there was just way more hate than anything else. Uh, and that's kind of sad to see. Um, it says a lot, speaks, speaks volumes. Um, but to be clear, I, I personally had people on the show that I was respectful to, that we've talked to, uh, that I reached out to even, that I don't like personally. Um, and that's what I mean. I, I try to separate myself as best I can unless uh, I think some people are a little silly. So that's my own personal opinion. But I try to mm -hmm. keep myself out as best as possible. I know Marco doesn't have anything in this other than um, kind of the, like you said, man, it became a tennis match. And um skunk was always something that i wanted to learn more about and so maybe mm -hmm. uh after putting out this show more people that remember the early days or were able to have skunks in some of the weirder states or unusual states like tennessee uh um 
Uh, we saw it in uh, at Charleston in South Carolina uh, and in Savannah, Georgia, and then down in like Jacksonville, especially during the big games. Um, if you guys don't know, college football is really big out there. So there was whoever was doing that back in the day uh, understood that and was at these places. And uh, I would imagine that it had to have been just a few people, man, with the amount of uh, the same quality, same stuff, same like same price. Um, nostalgia. I was hoping to go down the, the I guess, a nostalgia. I know. I did. Yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah I wanted him. Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really wanted him to be the guy that I could ask kind of all those questions about, you know, the breeding and the things like that. And he admitted that, hey, he was a younger guy when his dad was doing it. You know, I, I, I get it. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm glad we had to, I'm glad we had him on. You know what I mean? I, I just met the guy today, right? So from what I met, we had a good conversation, right? He didn't piss me off. You know, he might have, you know, didn't know everything we wanted him to know. But, um, you know, it's a cool conversation. And um, hopefully he can get on the right track and get his stuff together and put those genetics out in the right way and do the best for himself and his family. You know what I mean? That's what that's what I want. And then get it out in the community, you know, because right now there is the debate who's got the best skunk, right? There's no like just that kind of this guy's skunk or this skunk is the best, I don't think, right now. I think it's kind of up in the air. So, you know, there's room to to grow there really to find another skunk. Somebody in the chat said um, skunk man was breeding the skunk out of skunk for a while. You know what I mean? Because it was too damn loud. You know, that kind of stuff. There's all kinds of stuff to skunk. You know, if you go digging into the the history of it and all, but um, yeah, I would love to talk to his dad though. You know, what I mean, but his dad's probably you know got some stories for you, type shit. Yeah, man. And people are gonna have watch this show, maybe watch other shows, and make their own, uh, come up with their own viewpoint. And uh, that that honestly is the point of this: is that you guys kind of pick. Um, there's so many different stories. It's become like fish stories in a way. And um, sometimes when the fish stories line up, it does seem like it makes more sense. Uh, the Hell's Angel OG, like that one makes sense. It seems like a lot of people agree that that was going through the the upper echelon motorcycle clubs and for a reason, you know, I guess. Mm -hmm. Especially here in Colorado, man, that, that stuff was everywhere for a while. And so there are certain genetics that maybe just have a pocket, kind of like uh, music and things, you know? Not everybody blows up nationally. Somebody can be really blowing up in Atlanta, but their style is not going to equate to New York or California kind of thing. It's the same thing with genetics. I will say that outside of the bubble of certain genetics, uh, the East Coast is always last to get things, or at least the Far mm -hmm. East, like, you know, Coast, Savannah type stuff. So that mm -hmm. has always stuck out to people uh, when it is unbelievable genetics that people remember it, there's a nostalgia to it. And I think if you're getting into this and you have the ability to find real genetics or find genetics as close as, as you could, at least at, at this day and age, uh, grow them out and possibly see if you could find those things because uh, <laughs> the, the older individuals now have the means to buy that from you. And um, I, I think a lot of people would love to go down memory lane with uh, unbelievable flower. Yes, sir. Don't steal from your parents. <laughs> the chat said it. That's a, that's a good one to end on right there, man. You know. Yeah, I mean that says a lot, you know. And obviously, you can be in a certain mindset and then change and, and become a better person. But I, I hope that was rock bottom for him because I couldn't imagine doing that, and I can't imagine my kids doing that to me. I know, man. That's just the ultimate. Yeah, you know, like stealing a dollar out your mama's purse or something like that. That's that's low. No, but, um, I was working two jobs. Kind yeah, of. man. Yeah. Hit hit rock bottom, man. Hopefully that was rock bottom. And I appreciate him admitting that shit. I, it must have been on him if he's going to admit it like that on a live show and stuff. So it is what it is, man. Do better, everybody. Shit. Do a little better each day. That's all we can do. Karma is real, man. You know, whatever you're doing yeah. in the dark, that shit coming out, whether it's a year from now, five years from now. So if you're actually playing around with cannabis plants, and you think that you're going to be a shysty individual and uh, it's not, it's going to bring all these riches to you. Um, it's very rare. I know people have been able to do it, but most people fade away, man. Yeah. Yeah. 420 weekend coming up. What you got going on, man? 
Uh, really nothing. Uh, th that's what I mean with cannabis. I I love the plant itself. I love talking with you, Marco. I love learning from you. I love learning from this community, especially today. Learning about together. How <laughs> things, how things with some people still even operate. I mean, there's, if you're conducting yourself as kind of an OG or a mentor or somebody's been doing this, I've always looked up to people that are in that way because of the way that they handled themselves in good times and bad. And I've grown up playing poker and I've seen a lot of that where, uh, where you can tell a lot about somebody when they lose money, especially when they lose money in a, in a, like a real gambling sense where it was, <laughs> the odds should have been in their favor and it didn't go that way. Uh, and I think a lot of that comes to the breeders, at least for me, I associate a lot of that kind of stuff because it is kind of like gambling. You're buying lottery tickets. It's not like you're buying all these genetics from most breeders and you know that those are going to be uh, brand building genetics. And so a lot of people get their feelings hurt. They get into certain scenarios. Uh, I think that more people should pick up the phone and call one another. I even remember one time where Marco and I had this brief instance where I was like, what does fucking guy say? I'm sure he was saying the same thing. And we called each other and then we figured out there was a third party that was making uh, basically that like the phone game. Uh, that phone game wasn't being connected correctly. And so I, I would also say to you guys, especially if you've been friends with a long, a long time, most people don't communicate over the phone anymore in a voice type way. And I think you can get a look. Human beings understand a lot about tone and inflection, meaning. It doesn't sound like this person really did want to do these things to me, or maybe they did just fuck up. It's, it's you know, your personal stuff. Everybody in cannabis is going to get fucked over. That's just kind of the way it is. Uh, and especially if At you're keeping one. your head down. Yeah. Somebody's going to do something to you. That's just how it is. And so either view it. But to be fair, man, we've always joked around. I think even if you were selling teapots, a little old lady would try to talk shit about you at an expo or whatever. Like, I, I it's in everything. So mm -hmm. uh, stop taking stuff so personally. I think people um, just, again, just kind of sit back and watch. Um I, in the chat today, I mean, there's even dudes going off uh, that, I don't know, man, I I wouldn't sit here. If I didn't like somebody, I wouldn't sit here and, and spend all day on it. Uh, I, I come no. here to hang out with Marco. Um, yeah. This show definitely isn't something that we want to do all the time, but I think sometimes it's necessary and to learn more and to kind of uncover things. Uh, there's nothing wrong with trying to find the truth and sometimes... You know, you got you got to hear both sides sometimes. Uh, so yeah. yeah, I think I'd love to have debates too, Marco. I mean, we've tried to do that, uh, but unfortunately, one side will always agree, and then the other one won't. Uh, so yeah, I know. And then make a passive aggressive post about it. Yeah, so that, 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 that shit. <laughs> home grower is where it's at. I think that's uh, the emphasis of this show on Wednesdays. Uh, I hope that more people see that the genetics that you think you are buying. Uh, especially if you're getting them um, from untrusted sources. That's why uh, I think Peter's site is blown up because you know that Peter would be held accountable because he's too in the face of uh, the community to be out there just scamming every single person. And so nowadays I see that the younger generation is using things like Telegram and other things that are just really sketch uh places so when you get scammed on something like that i don't even it's it's like in the no early report. days not going on even on craigslist man going on back page and then trying to sell cannabis that way i mean these are some seedy dark places and you you think that every person you're talking to is one probably uh really a like a, a snatcher somebody that's trying to link up with you and just take mm -hmm. your shit um, and that's the part that's scary. And that's the reason why a lot of us had to have Imodium AD and Pepto-Bismol and stuff. Because that shit is scary. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's why you got to cut off the middleman. And when you grow the pack, you, you don't have to go meet in this. But you, like you say, you kind of do got to always make that transaction, I guess. I like now, though, man. Technology's sweet. I mean, you ain't got to be passing cash. And, you know, everything's all apps and shit. You know what I mean? So in some ways it's getting better in, in time, but like you said, in some ways it's easier to kind of get, you know, set people up too these days because there's access to so many noobs and, you know, people new to the game. Yeah. I mean, what are you, you going to tell PayPal that this dude ripped you off for some seeds? <laughs> right. Gonna close you down. 
So that's what I mean, man. You got to invest time uh, instead of getting scammed, you know, time and money. And and the expos is where you can literally ask questions to the breeders. If it's a big enough event, most of the big name people will be there. And that attracts a lot of the other like small time people that you could support. Usually their genetics are a lot cheaper. Usually the line's a lot smaller. That doesn't mean that those genetics are anything less than the ones that are uh, being followed. It's just that person is, you know, the hot artist right now. Everybody's loving that beat. Does that mean that things are going to change in a couple of months? Usually, yes. And a lot of that stuff is one hit wonders. And the last thing you want to be doing is setting up a grow and, and finishing out a year and a half, two years after your initial startup of some kind of genetics that was hot a year ago. Because no one's going to really care anymore, and you're definitely not going to get a premium price for it. So this is a chess game. This is for setting up, think, finding out what's going to be popular before it's out there. Um, and you can you can kind of see that again with a lot of the expos, especially if you're willing to fly to a variety of different ones. You'll see what breeders are popping off in every little uh, area. And then, in my opinion, you try to go to the smaller breeders and find genetics from their stuff because your stuff's going to be so much different from everybody else. Mm-hmm. Key. Yeah. Facts, man. Bars right there. Yeah, man. Well, shit, I guess, um, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. I see the viewers are trying to drop in. We, you know, it is what it is. We had a pretty good show here. And, yeah. Uh, we had a lot of people tuning in. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't want it to be drama. Uh, I want no. it to, for people to learn. But I didn't realize there was that much hate. I saw they were just kind of like a lot of people cracking jokes and shit, but it, you know, I guess it, a lot of people were cracking jokes. A lot of people look like they really mean what they were saying. That's what I mean. It's, I don't, we don't know anything about it other than this is what came up and it seemed like it was, uh, needed to be addressed because of the way things were handled behind the scenes. And other than that, man, uh, yeah. I wanna, um, I don't know, continue, continue this on a uh, home grower level. Uh, we'll definitely, uh, I don't know how to, we'll refocus on uh, the home grower aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Show us yeah. This is something we wanted to address and we got off of it and, uh, Heston's going to move on. Eastern Kentucky's going to move on and we're going to move on. So I don't know who the guest is next week, but, um, should be somebody good. Yeah, uh, unconfirmed yet. I wish I could drop the name. Uh, All right, st- tune in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't want to drop the name and then it, it doesn't work out. Uh, I know. Yeah. That's a whole nother drama. <laughs> yeah, they only knew, man. So yeah. good luck to everybody. Good luck to the people in the chat, even people that felt a certain way. Uh, I could understand that, um, you know. To be honest with you, man, I wouldn't be sitting here typing that shit out as much as you did. I see you, uh, Total Health Connections. I don't know anything about you, bud, but it's uh, two hours and 38 minutes, bud. I oh, he's still in there. <laughs> I ain't got that kind of time, man. So, yeah, great research. Well, you know, these people yeah. reached out. We had Heston on, and then other people spoke up, not just East Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, and East Kentucky made a... Um, a reason for us to put them on on the show and uh you guys get to pick how you feel about it well there was a new i just heard a new term uh me and nick we were watching something that uh a hate follow hate follower like you're only following you follow a guy so you can hate on him like that's a thing now uh with the youngins like they'll actually follow you so they can kind of follow you and hate on you along the way it's kind of crazy isn't it uh, yeah, I guess. You know what I mean? we, we, that is the one thing, whether you are filthy rich or unbelievably poor, we all get the same amount of hours. So you get to pick where your mind is at, where your head is at, what you want to fill it up with. Uh, believe me, if I let myself go into a dark spot, especially years ago, I guess anybody could sit here and feel a certain way about things. But you got to. That's what I mean, man. Everybody has been fucked over everybody everybody has a story to tell um and we're gonna tell them when we feel like it was one-sided or it seemed one-sided and then you guys make a decision for yourself and then we're gonna have a a new show next week all right peace everybody's the best yeah (laughs) see y'all